Hello. I got here just in time to see a spam bot of some sort get destroyed. So thank you for that. One day I'll remember how to moderate. So that I can also destroy stuff. But hello. Today. That's correct. Today is the last day of Stormblood. And I missed Calico reading the Stormblood boss lyrics. So I'm going to redeem my own... Funny button. If I can find it. Storm of blood born from blood of our fallen brothers born upon our hands cradled in our arms swelling in our hearts raise your weary head heed the call to arms ringing in your heart loyalty. Unity. Liberty. Thank you, Kelly. But yeah, it's time. For 4.5 Requiem of Heroes. A Requiem of Heroes? I keep forgetting if there's an A in the title. There is. It's A Requiem for Heroes. Here's Sucro. I just wanted her to face... I just wanted her to be sitting at this table. Looking at it looking down at the table, but she looks like she's having a really difficult time. She looks like she's gotten... She looks like she's a little traumatized right now. And like, hey, Sucra, I'm having kind of a rough day too, to be honest, but we can get through this together. Hello, Sucro. So, hello, welcome, everybody. Here we are. Once again at the Rising Stones. Last time, various things were happening that were then suddenly interrupted by people's souls being yeeted out of their brains into an unknown location or something like that. I don't remember exactly how much we're supposed to know already. Um, people had psychic headaches and then aren't waking up, and their souls seem to be missing. I'd say there's a good chance that we're going to spend a lot of time pondering that mystery today. And trying to see what's up with that. Because that seems like a major concern, I would say. Just, just a hunch. Yeah. It's possible that something is villainous. What do you think, Alize? Soul searching. Alize is at her wit's end. I'm glad you've come, though I'm afraid there's little in the way of good news. It's better to be at your wit's end than to be at joke's end for Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, am I right, gamers? <laughs> God, what a what a thing to say in the first like minutes of the stream. What a terrible, ridiculous joke. But also, that touch is bad. Okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, so that's that's setting the tone for today, clearly. Um. After you left, we reached out to both the Alchemist's Guild and Stillglade Fane and attempted all manner of treatments. But the results were always the same. Whatever the answer is, it's not alchemy or conjuring. Why did it have to be Yishtola and Urianger and not me? Out of all of us, they are the ones who could feasibly have solved this puzzle. And Elfano's still missing. God, it's all going wrong. Where do we even start? A grave situation indeed. Might I be of some assistance? I think we're considering soul searching right now. It's Kryl! Hooray! Kryl? I thought you were busy delving into the mysteries of Eureka. Kryl decided the grind was kind of not worth it. When word reached me of the plight of our friends, I could not well stay away. As a fellow scion, not to mention your erstwhile mentor, this is one of those times you should feel free to call on me, regardless of my personal circumstances. 
I'm guessing from the little quest image thumbnail thing that Matoya might be involved soon as well. You know, that's also possible. Maybe she... Maybe she just did the entire grind at once. She was just working on, like, her second or third or fourth Eureka weapon by this point. I... Yes, I should have thought of that. Thank you for coming, Kryle. We would welcome your insight. And I should be happy to provide it. Now, what's this I hear about Alphano heading into Imperial territory? That boy always did have some funny ideas. Do you remember the speech he gave when he was accepted to the studium? Kryle. I don't know if this is... Kryal, I don't know if this is the time to dunk on Alphano. I know it's always the time to dunk on Alphano, but it still might not be the time to dunk on Alphano right now. My life's goal is not less than the salvation of this star. If you mix up Alize and Alphano, one or both of them will kill you, probably. Also, good Alphano impression right here. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, maybe it was time to lighten the mood a little bit. Sucro seems baffled by this. That particular grand pronouncement has been a source of great embarrassment to him, as you know. But the fact of the matter is, he meant every word and has lived his life accordingly. Yes, he remains altruistic to a fault, but I'm worried he was too fixated on his goals to see the dangers, as has happened before. To be fair, Alphano couldn't have predicted that people would get psychic headaches that deleted their souls or whatever is happening. You needn't be so concerned. Though his values remain the same, Alphano is not the blinkered boy he once was. Slowly but surely his eyes have been opened, thanks to a certain someone. Sucro still looks baffled. A certain someone whom he'd be mortified to learn had heard about his little speech. Mum's the word, eh? I hope there is a dialogue option with Alphano at some point that is just quoting that exact line. Are you saying is Alphano responsible for something, or is Alphano responsible, like, in general? He's responsible for losing all of the Scion's funding a second right, ago. I'd better have a look at our but... <laughs> They're in the infirmary, I assume. I'll need absolute quiet, so it would be best if I did this alone. If you'll excuse me. No, I don't... I don't think Alphano's to blame for anything. No, no, no. Alphano went to do something else. And like, we don't know the current situation of Alphano too well. But we do know that all the people in the Scions are getting psychic headaches and falling into comas. And I was just saying that Alphano couldn't have predicted that particular danger. Though, um, going into the Empire probably has a bunch of dangers he could have thought about more. So. I'm sure we'll learn about what Alphano is up to soon enough. I guess that door's the infirmary. I don't know if we've ever seen what's in that door prior to this point. Oh, Sucro's just staring at the table after all. All three are in fine physical health. At a glance, I would say they were merely sound asleep. Except for the fact that I couldn't sense the slightest trace of them in their bodies. It's as if their souls have taken leave of their physical forms. Ah, uh, yes. The Elder Seed Seer made a similar observation. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think we knew that. I've read the report. When you heard this mysterious voice, you described feeling as if you were somewhere else, yes? Nod. If we assume the ether which comprises your essence is being drawn to some other place, then it may be possible to follow the trail it leaves behind, just as we did in our search for Thancred. Smile. I wasn't around for that, 
but I can't imagine it was easy. Oh, it wasn't. But that's no reason not to try. I will have need of Master Matoya's crystal eye if I'm even to make the attempt. So, I suggest we pay her a visit. Time to go bother Matoya again. Matoya loves it when we pay a visit. Every time. Matoya has not grumbled about this even once. Parentheses lie. But hey, guess what? My retainers completed their ventures. Yay. <laughs> Matoya is good. Level 80 earrings of bending. Level 57 earrings if I don't care. Because I'm higher level than that. A rare a rare fabric that delights mankind for unknown and possibly sinister reasons. What? Can I evolve Dusclops with this? Um. <laughs> and a headband. Apparently the only thing I can think of when I see fabric and sinister is sinister cloth Pokemon evolution item. This person has a funny cat. I forget. I think that's Gunbreaker. I think that's a Gunbreaker mount. Anyway. Have I mentioned Blamp Rest before? Surely I have, because I just like to point out the name Blamp Rest again. I know we were just also next to someone named Sark Malark, but Blamp Rest is pretty high tier NPC name. Tier list of Final Fantasy XIV NPC names. It would take a while to complete, but would it be a worthwhile effort? Maybe. Whoa. I hate that you can do that. <laughs> I hate that there's a button to make the chat the entire <laughs> blamp fatigue. <laughs> A blamp sounds like a trendy tech product marketed towards vampires. Like it stands for blood lamp and it's an alternative to sunlight to provide vampires with something because they're not supposed to have sunlight. But it's a trendy tech object so it doesn't actually do anything helpful. It mostly just costs $200 and glows red. And like, maybe it's a little bit like a lava lamp of blood, but it doesn't really help. Please do keep Alphano's little speech to yourself. He can be awfully sensitive at times. <laughs> yeah, just like one of the salt lamps. Blood. Oh no. Why am I talking? I shouldn't be bringing up blood. That's really dangerous. I shouldn't be talking about blood or blood will show up. They could show up at any... Oh, no! It's blood. They're here. They're, they're a little bit... There they are. We've summoned blood. I'm sorry, everyone. Get out of here, blood. Okay. <laughs> I 
I'd heard Master Matoya was something of a recluse, but this seems extreme. Still, I'll happily overlook her eccentricities if she agrees to help us. Oh right, Alizé hasn't met Matoya yet. Matoya is going to mistake Alizé for Alphano, and Alizé is going to make a face. Hello, it's us again. Come to disturb my peace again, have you? I hide myself away in a cave, and still you people insist on pestering me with your problems. Yeah, that is a very Smash Bros. Ultimate sort of... Yeah. For those of you who weren't aware, on the Pokemon Green stream, I somehow accidentally broke the game into glitch mode. And I withdrew a glitch Pokemon from the box to see what would happen and evolved it and the evolution was named blood in all caps and this is this is real and not a creepypasta I'm pretty sure this is because of the bootlegs translation of the name of the move leech life and it just happened to, to pull leech life as the name of the creature which starts with like blood it's called like blood suck or blood drain or something probably and then there's a five character limit for Pokemon names in the bootleg, so it's just blood. And it was this. Scrambled Dragonite. And uh, I lost my mind. I laughed the most I've ever laughed on a stream, probably. It probably sounded a little concerning. I don't know. Anyway, what's up, Matoya? mistook you for young what's his name but i see now you're the sister oh okay weren't you supposed to be the lively one i've seen happier faces at a rain sodden burial okay matoya's not mistaking alizé for alphano like she did very briefly well i'm sorry to dash your expectations but the situation isn't exactly conducive to gaiety <laughs> ah, that's more like it. Stoller used to spit and hiss like a wildcat too. Better for a young thing like you to be filled with fire and leave the doom and gloom to your elders. Now, what exactly does this tragic situation of yours have to do with me? If I may, Master Matoya. We have need of your crystal eye once more. Explaining. Well, even Matoya's music fades out due to the gravity of this situation. And Stola is one of the afflicted, is she? Very well. She may be an ungrateful stray, but she's my ungrateful stray, and I'll not see her buried before I am. Matoya has become serious. Right. Let us see what we can see. Yeah, Matoya's voice actor is great. Absolutely. I'll begin from where our friends first fell and cast my senses out from there. I wonder who the VA for Matoya is. Probably in the credits somewhere. I mean, because I would hope so. That doesn't look promising. What is it? Did you find them? This, this doesn't make sense. How is it even possible? Wow, Kryle has never been this frazzled, even once. And just last time we were seeing, like, Ariange and Yastola, like, way more frazzled than they'd ever been. 
everyone's just kind of falling apart. How is what possible? Kryl, what did you see? It's definitely very impactful to see all of these characters just suddenly freaking out. The, th the threads, they just... They just ended. And, and no, I didn't lose track of them. I followed them as far as they went. It's as if... It's as if they were cut off. Could the ether have dissipated if it had? Oh, oh gods! Their bodies are just husks. It's like the broodmother's daughter all over again. No, no, th this is different. The Kalyana girl was already dead, body and soul, when Lakshmi affected her resurrection. Aye, let's not jump to conclusions. If their physical forms yet breathe and show no signs of wasting, then it follows that their souls must still be intact somewhere. But where? That's the question, isn't it, girl? Death has not taken them to the Ethereal Sea, yet there are no tracks left for us to follow. We're no closer to an answer than when we started. But knowing their souls are still out there is progress of a sort. We just have to keep looking. Pray, excuse me a moment. Phone call. Yes? I remember, but... What, to Alamigo? We're on our way. That was Lise. Apparently, a group of Popularis have defected to Alamigo, and Maxima, the envoy Alphano left with, is one of them. I'm sorry. I realize we've barely begun here, but... Nod. Go, child, go! You've made up your mind, and life's too short for dithering. I'll do some digging in the meantime, and see if there isn't some other method we could use to continue the search. Matoya, if life's too short for dithering, how am I supposed to shade 2-bit pixel art? Let's be off then. Matoya, please. Huh? Oh. Oh, not again. The enchantment barely seems to take these days. I chalk it up to old age, but I rather doubt it's that simple. Oh right, ether is getting like weirdly sparse and thin everywhere. That's probably why that happened. Before they took ill, Yishtola and Urianger were sharing notes on a thinning of the ether. It seems to be happening all over. Does it now? And here I was all set to blame my woes on that creaking mountain of refuse clogging up the Thaliac. I fear something has gone awry. Still, there's naught to be gained from starting at shadows. You can only do what can be done, and that but one thing at a time. Nod. I'm sorry I couldn't do more. I've never seen a soul's thread end so abruptly before. So that was the woman who tamed Yashtola. I guess you could put it that way, if you had to, which I don't think you need to. I had the distinct feeling of being grabbed by the scruff of the neck and having the nonsense shaken out of me. When Alphano is back, I'd like to visit again and ask her what tales she has of Grandfather. I almost can't bear to hear what Maxima has to tell us, but it can't be bad news, can it? Lise would have said, unless... Uh, there's no point speculating. Lise said she'd notified the guards of our coming, so we should head straight to the palace gate in the Alamegan Quarter. I'll be praying for good news. Learn what you can about Alphano's plight, and leave the search for our friend's lost souls to me. Wave. Nod.
expecting Alphino to also be soulless at the moment. Or very soon, anyway. Alphino will be all right. He has to be. Greetings, Scions. The commander told me to expect you. Shall I show you in? Yes. I'm sorry to drag you halfway across the realm, but when Maxima mentioned Alphino, I thought you'd want to hear the news in person. Nod. Ah, we meet again. Though I was hoping our reunion would be under more auspicious circumstances. What happened to my brother? Where is Alphino? Never fear, my lady. Your brother was in fine health when I took my leave of him, and I have no reason to assume that has changed. You assume? If you will allow me, I shall endeavor to explain events. Our troubles began not long after we departed Doma. While crossing the burn, we were fired upon by the Emperor's personal guard and forced to make an emergency landing. As we stumbled from the wreckage, our attackers fell upon us again, and we would have perished there and then were it not for the intercession of a third party a band of mercenaries whose leader claimed to pursue a vendetta against the Asians. This Shadow Hunter, as he styled himself, then escorted us out of the wastes to relative safety. Upon arriving back in civilization, I gathered my Populares colleagues and prepared to flee the Empire. Master Alphino, however, declined the invitation to join us, preferring to continue his investigation into the Asian threat. Well, at least he's not lying in a heap in the burn. At least he's all right, so far. Tell us more about these Asian hunters. Who are they? And is Alphano still with them? He is. As to who they are, I'm afraid I have nothing to tell you. Beyond the fact that they root out and destroy Asians, they were unwilling to divulge anything which might serve to identify them. They would not even reveal their next destination. But Master Alphino asked to accompany them all the same. Since parting company with your brother, we've been engaged in a game of cat and mouse with the Emperor's guard. We made our way through province after province, finding the army busy restoring order wherever we went, until we finally arrived here in Alamigo. I cannot thank Commander Aldin enough for giving us such an unexpectedly warm welcome. I'm not inclined to turn away refugees, no matter which land they call home. And if they can tell me how things lie in Garlemald, all the better. Garlemald. that subject there is much Not mauled. Okay. During the course of our journey, we heard tales that an entire rebel army had been slaughtered in the space of a single night. It would seem my former comrades grew tired of putting down uprisings in the conventional manner, and chose instead to bring a formidable new weapon to bear. Details were sparse, but the rumor alone was enough to dampen the flames of rebellion. I have also heard reports that several companies have withdrawn from their designated provinces and begun marching westward. It is my assessment that the Empire's forces are mobilizing for a large-scale military engagement. Westward? You mean they're getting ready to invade Alamigo? We knew this was coming, but not that it would be so soon. We've barely even begun to shore up our defenses. They won't stop an invading army. No, they won't. Dispatch messengers to the Alliance leadership requesting reinforcements, and send word to our officers in the field to hasten completion of those border fortifications. Prepare to meet the Imperials head on! 
No matter how quickly we act, we still want for time. When the enemy comes into view, our best recourse will be to open negotiations with their commander, and see that the ensuing proceedings take as long as possible. Nod. Would you and Alize head to Doma and let Lord Hien know about this? I'm sure he'll want to hear about Alfino too. Consider it done. We'll send word when... <laughs> Untold sorrow must be changed. Ahead looms a calamity. Beyond the come instant. Throw wide the gates. You heard it too. Well, at least we're both still standing. Nod. Oh, thank the gods. I thought we'd lost you for a moment there. Why does this keep happening? I wish I knew. Nothing we've tried has brought us any closer to an answer. We'll keep working on it. But first, we need to go and see Lord Hien. Nod. So Alfino is safe, for the present at least. Now all, all we need to worry about is a full-scale Imperial invasion. I'm actually glad Lys tasked us with visiting Lord Hian. Better to be dashing from place to place than sitting around stewing over things we can't change. To the Enclave. To the Enclave. To the Enclave, to donate to the Shazenkai, hooray! I don't know if I have much right now, but we'll see. Okay, that's most of it, actually. It's time for a brief interruption of whatever we were doing. Yeah, one. It's a small number. Yay. On behalf of the Shazenkai Sukro, I thank you for your support. Greeting. Work on the yard has begun in earnest, as you may have noticed. It will encompass a rather large section of the Enclave, including the area directly behind me. You see, after deliberation, the Shazenkai concluded that we would need to secure much more space for this plan to succeed, far in excess of what we designated for the 10,000 stalls. This might not have been the case had we not decided to carry out two proposals that are arguably at cross-purposes, but so be it. At the very least, I am told that Master Suranuki is in high spirits. Perhaps you might consider calling on him and seeing the worker's progress? Okay, so all I have to do in order to fund this properly is to take the Allegan Platinum piece from Chloe's Wondrous Tales every week. Um, the yard is... Where exactly? Oh. It's not, it doesn't seem to be clearly marked as to where I need to be speaking to somebody. Suranuki, but where are you? I mean, this is the yard. There you are. Oh, you are marked. Oh, 
Ah, there's the warrior. Heard you the good word. The Shazen guys put their plans in motion. I will have my smithy once more. Never dared I dream this day would come. Doma burned, Lord Kyan died, all because we were fools, and never again would I be a fool. But then you and the boy Issei and the girl, Lise, you spoke sense. Better to risk death as a fool than suffer a life without dreams. Ah, uh, what's this- what is this blubbering which consumes me? Enough, let us speak of the work. That is what matters, I. The carpenters have claimed that site for their own. My blood may run with iron, but even I know Doma wants for lumber, so with wood we begin. Blessed are we to live at the mouth of the one river, in such a humid clime. There are few teachers better than Rut and Rust. Bwahaha ha Rut? To rot and rust. Bwahaha ha 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 ha. Ha ha. And here will be my smithy, a home for forge and anvil, but not yet, not yet. Much iron lies beneath Doma's soil, waiting to be claimed, waiting to be shaped. All that we need she provides, water, wood, ore, the materials are ours to command. To forge into tools for farmers, cooks, for all. Or so it once was, imperial robbers and sneak thieves stole much of our mineral wealth for the empire. Pa! To other provinces they would send Doma's riches, and in return we received their refuse, rusted pots, broken plows. A travesty it was, and still is. Still we rely on inferior tools forced upon us by conquerors, but no longer. Doma knows what Doma needs, and she will make it with her own two hands. To this end I will give everything, I swear. But I should like to see it before I die, and to that end we will need your help. Bwahahaha. Nod. Construction of the yard is proceeding apace, and Suranuki is confident that he will soon have the means to craft a wide variety of tools to fulfill the needs of the people of Doma. As you continue to contribute to the Shazenkai and the reconstruction effort, in what other ways might the Doman Enclave grow and change? Grow and change, not grow in chains, captions. Jeez. Wait, what's the reclamation box for? Oh. I see. I could take things back if I wanted to. That won't be necessary. Okay, so once you interact with the basket again, you immediately see the next part. On behalf of the Shazenkai, Sucro, I thank you for your support. Nod. I'm pleased to inform you that we've made great strides in our efforts to rebuild the Enclave. Owing to your many contributions, the Yard has seen further development. More. More cutscenes are here. Thank you for your support. Greeting. I'm sure, as I'm sure you are aware, the southern portion of the Yard under Master Suranuki's supervision is coming along quite well. Moreover, construction of the buildings adjacent to my office has begun. Several of these buildings have been designated for the production of traditional Doman arts and crafts, including paper. You may recall the gentleman we met in the stalls the other day, Master Araragi? He will be overseeing matters there. Come to think of it, perhaps you should go and introduce yourself to him. I know not if you've spoken with him since, but given the circumstances of that first meeting, he may not remember you. Oh wait, did I ever... Oh, I do have a level 79 armor. Neat.
Sukuro, was it? Forgive me. During our brief encounter at the stalls, I neglected to introduce myself properly. I am Araragi, a papermaker by trade. Is all I've ever known in my altogether too long life. Greetings, Master Araragi. The construction of your paper mill is proceeding as planned, I trust? More or less, I. Though it has not escaped my notice that the progress on the Ironmonger's workshops is outpacing mine. A, a thousand pardons, Master Araragi. You may be assured that the Shasunkai has not chosen to favor either one of your proposals other, over the other. Corgis, in the background. I know that full well, child. Save your apologies. I but give voice to my frustration at falling behind the old goat. If Master Sirunuki has wronged or offended you in some fashion, perhaps the, Shaz the Shazenkai could arbitrate. No, no, there's no need for anything so dramatic. We have a long and storied history, he and I. Though our paths diverged long ago, we are peers, masters of our respective trade. And yet, every time we cross paths, I cannot help but see him as the reckless apprentice he once was. He brings out the worst in me. But never mind that. You wish to know of our progress, yes? As you can see, is all is on schedule. Your contributions have helped us to come far indeed. Though it will be some time before we can pr begin producing paper as before, rest assured that the day will come before you know it, and the quality will surpass all expectations. For centuries, Doman paper has been coveted the world over. And with good reason, the fibers of the Kozo, a variety of your western mulberry, I believe, and the waters of the One River combine to create a product like none other. Each sheet is produced one at a time with the technique unchanged since antiquity. Though relatively quick, the process takes years to master, yet the effort is well worth it. Doman paper was prized for both its durability and its beauty, so much, that, so much so that merchants would bicker and squabble and strive to outbid one another, so certain they were that they could still turn a profit. Indeed, it was arguably our most successful export. Kami willing, it will be again, which reminds me. Kozakura, my dear, I trust you've given thought to whom we might sell our paper once production has commenced in earnest. While I'm aware of our agreements with the Zela traders and the Confederacy, I doubt very much that these parties will put much store by our product. We have made inquiries, but have yet to receive any replies. But you needn't worry about such things. We will see to the mercantile matters. You and your workers should devote your energies to building the mill. Have no doubt that we are. I mislike losing to my iron-headed competitor. The road ahead is long, but I pray you will continue to walk it with us. Leave it to me. Construction of the yard is proceeding ap apace, and Kozakura is confident that the Shazenkai will have found a wholesale trader willing to purpose purchase paper by the time Araragi's mill is ready to begin production. Yeah, I like the, the dome and enclave rebuilding stuff quite a bit. And it's it's nice to see that Araragi is actually a pretty reasonable guy after the initial like first impression that you get of him. Okay, that's all for this week. He's just really dedicated to his craft. Anyway, back to the main story. Lots of people are here. I am come to represent the lands of Nangxia. Long have we struggled in defiance of the Empire, waiting for just such an opportunity as this alliance presents. Oh, a Dalmascan fusilier. The fall of Rabanastre, Rabanastre was not the end of our nation. We who survived retreated underground and have been gathering strength to mount a counter-offensive. Dalmasca will rise again. Hey, Sirena. After their humbling at your hands, Magni and his Oranir have spent every waking moment upon the training fields. Defeat does not sit well with the son and his children. Hey, Tansui. The Imperials have enjoyed the freedom of the Ruby Sea for long enough. It is time they paid their dues. Hello, Blue, Blue Kojin. We of the Blue Kojin will not submit to the Empire's tyranny. If only our Red Brethren would awaken to their folly. I'm trying to remember... It'd be really funny if Sorabon was here if you hadn't done the side quest where Sorabon ends up having to be busy with other things. I.e. being the next... Uh, 
All the names have escaped my brain. Genbu? Is that the right one? Turtle? Alone, Doma could accomplish little against the Empire, but in concert with the allies who have gathered here today, we might do as much. Or we might... we might do much. Sucro, you've arised, arrived in time to witness the beginnings of our new alliance. Our proposal struck a chord with many of our neighbors, I'm pleased to say. Let me read what you said again. Okay. Yeah, Genbu. That's what I figured. I wasn't entirely sure. Greetings, my friends. I was just discussing future endeavors with the members of our newly formed alliance. The Kojin and the Confederacy you already know, and it was your own strength of arms that won us the cooperation of the Steppe Tribes. We've also been joined by our neighbors from Nangsha and the indomitable citizens of Dalmasca, though the scattered nature of the latter's resistance will somewhat delay their official induction. These proud peoples have united under a single purpose, to stand against the tyranny of the Garlean Empire. Yeah. Authored's a pretty cool place. I'm glad to see your alliance is coming together so swiftly. As things stand, I fear we shall soon have need of your strength. Explaining. I thank you for bringing me news of Alphano. His fate is never far from my thoughts, and not only because he's our emissary. As for this sudden deployment of Imperial forces, I agree that Alamigo would be wise to shore up its borders with all haste. Every report we receive from our shinobi indicates a massing of troops in the western provinces. It seems all but certain that the Empire is poised to bring its fist down upon Eorzea. And I would help deflect that blow, but I cannot ri ri I cannot risk sending reinforcements just yet. We will remain vulnerable to airborne assault until our wall in the burn is in place. The all-important Allegan Energy Barrier. Nod. The Energy Barrier, yes. I thought to call it something more auspicious. A name drawn from the Four Lords of Legend, perhaps. Serius Aegis or some such. Well, just a thought. The Ironworks engineers report that they've finished calibrating the, the generators and are ready to proceed to the testing stage. Have you time to attend the first test? You've seen the field which protected Aziz La firsthand, and I would be interested to hear how you think ours, compare <coughs> ours compares. Nod. Excuse me for the cough there. I will come too, if you don't mind. Though I am no Yashtola, I may be, able, may be able to offer some insight. Seem to be having trouble reading today. Of course. Time being of the essence, it would be best if we made directly for the burn. Yugiri, I leave you and Hakuro to, to bring the War Council to a close. Understood. Your mounts are saddled and ready, my lord. Where are the storms? As expected, Suino Sato failed to answer the call. Not that I blame the Ruby Princess. Enlightened as she is reputed to be, it could be no easy task persuading her people to relinquish their long-held isolation. You obviously have some idea of what to expect, having seen the barrier at Asis La. But having not had that pleasure myself, I'm exceedingly curious to see a wall capable of keeping out one of those massive Imperial airships. If we can but block out the Garlean's airships, the speed with which they deploy their forces will be greatly diminished. The jungles of Nangsha are dense and treacherous. The land itself preve <coughs> sorry, prevents the Empire from ever truly conquering our nation. Long have we hidden behind bow and branch, striking where and when we can. When the Empire put down Dalmasca's bid for freedom, our remaining forces were splintered. 
Bringing the scattered pockets of resistance back under a single banner will be our first order of business. One after another, tribes from across the steppe have come forth to pledge their warriors to the Alliance. Many simply crave a chance to seize glory in battle, it's true. It is true, but their eagerness is most welcome nonetheless. Out on the open sea, I would happily take on any vessel, but here on dry land is another matter. The Empire's iron monstrosities will ever have the upper hand. If only we could persuade our kin of the error of their ways, with the red at our side, we would make a truly formidable force. Seriu's Wall. I guess we are going with that. We will cross the burn by Yol and Falcon as before. Join me at the Overlook near the House of the Fierce. Nod. It'd be funny if you could go, like, ask Seryu what he thinks about this. Like, hey, did you know we named an energy barrier after you just now? How do you feel about that, Seryu? Since, like, we know Seryu now. I seriously doubt there would be a, a separate text box for that, but it would be funny if there was. Let us pray there are no sandstorms brewing out there. Well, there's a rainstorm right now. Give the word when you're ready to take wing. If I've learned anything from video games, it's that if the weather flag is flipped in one location, it very well might be in other locations at the same time. But it seems that we're fine, actually. And also, that's not how weather works in this video game, at least, but still. It seems the engineers have matters well in hand. Should the barrier work as we intend, Dorma will be free to reinforce her allies in Alamigo without fear of weakening her own borders. Nod. Honored friends, the time has come to put your hard work to the test. Start the generator. I guess, yeah, Seryu probably would be a little annoyed, huh? And yeah, this is a pretty good plan. We've observed stuff that exists in an area and figured out how to use it and spent our resources wisely. And also, it's just a cool thing that we get to do. is operational. Nodes 2 to 8 are reporting similar energy levels. The barrier is forming. This is more to keep out the air forces than the ground forces. So it's a really big wall. Oh, okay, you were getting to that part. <laughs> 1,000 yams. 2,000. 3,000. Expansion remains smooth. No fluctuations detected. Oh yeah, I guess I didn't think about that either, like, since they don't have ether-related stuff, they wouldn't be able to, like, get through the wall in that way either. Hexagons, the most powerful shape when combined with each other. 5,000! 5, Target altitude reached! The barrier is holding steady at 5,000 yards! We've done it! Yay! Eorzean engineers are truly like one of the most powerful forces in this video game. Oh look, a convenient... Is that an Imperial airship? Of all the rotten timing. I don't know, I think that's pretty convenient this timing, is a gift, actually. Mistress Alize. They can test our new wall for us. I wanted to make a funny cartoon bonk noise. Ah. Uh. Not quite a funny cartoon bonk noise. To the stars. 
Bear my arctic blast. The great power well, of money. Please fire. don't pick on me. Destroy. Thank you. <laughs> I don't... I never expect destroyed. Well, I, okay, sometimes I expect destroyed, but I didn't expect it there. Hin was hoping for a fireball. I was hoping for funny cartoon sound effects. Okay, but who is it? Oh. 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 By the gods. It's Alpha, no. What are you... Let me go! He has my brother! The wall, Alizé. Lower the barrier! What if the barrier lowering took as long as it took to raise it and like the, the triumphant music played in reverse the whole time? Be at ease, girl. The lad is not dead, merely locked in slumber. No, not him too. That's true. I didn't really realize that the calling, as you put it, would have to hit someone every time. I felt like it was possible for it to not hit somebody. But that does make sense. We could identify no cause and found no remedy. Thus I sought to return him to Doma, and into the arms of Lord Hian himself, it would seem. It is a day for fated reunions. Would you not agree, adventurer? Or should I address you as the Warrior of Light? That's true. I guess we didn't know that. I narrowing Sucro. I think Sucro knows who this is, maybe. She sure does! It's Gaius Van Balesar! Stock crowd cheering sound effects. Or the Black Wolf, if you prefer. Guess what Shadow Hunter was Gaius this whole time? I knew this already? I don't remember if I knew this the first time. Let me just uh, redeem my own. Tell me, for whom do you fight? Humph. And do you believe in Erzia? Erzia's unity is forged of falsehoods. Its city-states are built on deceit and its faith is an instrument of deception. It is not but a cobweb of lies. To believe in Erzia is to believe in nothing. In Erzia, the tribes often summon gods to fight in their stead though your comrades only rarely respond in kind. Which is strange, is it not? Are the twelve otherwise engaged? I was given to understand they were your protectors. If you truly believe them your guardians, why do you not repeat the trick that served you so well at Cartano, and call them down? They will answer so long as you lavish them with crystals and gorge them on neither. Your gods are no different from those of the tribe's icons every one. Accept but this, and you will see how Erzia's faith is bleeding the land dry. Nor is this unknown to your masters. Which prompts the question, why do they cling to these false deities? What drives even men of learning even the great Luizoix to grovel at their feet? The Louis answer, Oix, your masters lack that. the strength to do otherwise. For the world of Cat to mean anything, Cat must own the world. To this end, she hath fought ever to raise herself through conflict to grow rich through conquest. Oh yeah, I also changed this slightly. And when the dust of battle settles, it is ever the strong who dictate the fate of the weak. Knowing this, but a single path is open to the impotent ruler that of false worship. A path which leads to innervation and death. Only a Cat of power can rightly steer the course of civilization. And in this land of creeping mendacity, that one truth will prove its salvation. Come, champion of Erzia, face me. Your defeat shall serve as proof of my readiness to rule. It is only right that I should take your realm. For none among you has the power to stop me. Meow. That entire speech was going through Sucro's head this entire time. That's why it was necessary to play it.
She was remembering Gaius Van Belsar. Gaius Van Belsar. And yeah, we didn't know the because the I, voice had changed. Gaius Van Belsar, the Black Wolf. That was the title I was given. One I have long since relinquished. I'm kind of surprised that the player character immediately recognizes this person. Though I guess like the 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 weapon, they are Garlean. The voice would have sounded similar to the character, even though it changed in from the perspective of the player, etc. But like, I feel like if I were the warrior of light, I would not realize who this was immediately. <laughs> but then again, my memory is not the best. Glaring. Stand down. The Legatus of the 14th Imperial Legion died in Castrum Meridianum. I am no more than Gaius Bailsa, a man without rank or allegiance. Also, I noticed during that very long pause that I did to play the funny speech that Sucro's shadow is sharper than everyone else's. Such is the nature of video game graphic, I guess. Impossible. There's no way you could have survived. Do you remember how it unfolded? How I was deceived by La Habrea? How I was convinced that reviving the Ultima weapon would allow me to bring peace to Eorzea? Yeah. The Essian used me, as he used so many others, all to further the restoration of his wretched god. Oh wow, I forgot about that happening to you. That's very funny. Ayato blacked out for that portion of the story. It also, I guess, helps to play the Gaius van Belsar speech, not only as a joke, but as like a reminder of the, the speech and who Gaius is. So you see, the funny joke also had utility, I guess. Though we are being reminded Even more right now. Even with the might of at my command, you bested me. And as the Praetorium went up in flames, I was content to burn along with it. For a moment, at least. A moment of folly. To surrender my life thus would have been to betray all who died for my cause. It was for them that I dragged myself free of the rubble and swore vengeance on the Assians. Gaius, your sword is clipping through your hood. The Black Wolf has shed his pelt, never to return to Garlemald or her legions. I live now only to exact revenge. My principal quarry was to be La Habrea, whom I gather you have since ushered onto oblivion. Yeah, I guess we beat you to that one, huh? Nod. Nod, parentheses, so angry. Long as their kind lurked in the shadows, laboring to sow chaos throughout our world, I would see each and every one dragged into the light and put to the sword. The word shadows has been mentioned twice in voiced cutscene dialogue today. Are the scions not of like mind? In this single respect, perhaps. Then I shall continue the partnership the boy began, and share what intelligence I have acquired. Among the Asians, the black masked ilk are subordinate to those who wear red. This you already know. Oh, I forgot Gaius just explains the Asians a little bit more here. That's very helpful, actually, because I had forgotten this stuff. Yet among the red, there exists a hierarchy. Those set adrift with the shards, clearly stand below those still joined to the source. Do we know about shards yet? Do we actually know about shards? We do? Okay. Nebriales, who once dared to intrude upon the Rising Stones, belonged to the former group. And while he was indeed a dangerous foe, his powers were inconsequential next to the paragons of the source. Oh, right, of course. 
we we do know a little bit from them. It's really the difficult to keep track Lambert, of everything. Who plagues us no more. There is also the white robed Elidibus and the elusive Emmet Selk, about whom little is known. Hmm. We have files on La Habrea and Elidibus, but I believe this Emmet Selk is new to us. Nod. Sucro's just angry this whole time. My brother told you, we have evidence to suggest that an Asian now walks in the body of the Crown Prince. Have you identified this interloper? Elidibus seems the most likely culprit. As emissary, it is his role to maintain the equilibrium between darkness and light. I do believe we already knew that the Crown Pin Prince was currently Elidibus as well. Your many deeds in Hydaelyn's so name Sucro didn't know that. Balance. And I believe he seeks to restore it by throwing his considerable power behind the Empire. As a leader of the Asians, he is one of our primary targets. It was on the trail of this very prey that the boy and I came across the scene of a failed uprising. In the absence of a single Garlean casualty, we inspected the bodies of the rebels, and the lack of any external injury drew my immediate attention. They had been slain by Black Rose, an alchemical invention of the Imperial Army. When I yet served as Legatus, I ordered its production halted, and all stockpiles destroyed. Toxic gas is not a tool of conquest, but of extermination. Toxic gas? This must be the new weapon Maxima warned us about. Something deadly enough to sweep away all resistance in a matter of hours. Gods. You don't think they're planning to use this in Alamigo, do you? Put your fears to rest. We infiltrated the production facility and destroyed all existing stores of the chemical along with the plant itself. Even should they rebuild the operation, they will not soon manufacture another batch. We decided that this plot point was going to be handled off screen. You're welcome. Regardless, I would draw your attention to a directive we discovered in the plant's records. The document was marked with a recent date and authorized with the signature of one Zeno C. A. Galvis. A dead man signing the death warrant for thousands. Tis bad comedy. Nod. But the tale does not end there. Within that same facility was a chamber filled with devices of elegant design. Cloning technology, we realized. And what should we find in each and every incubator? But a young Emperor Solus. Hmm. Well, we knew there were multiple Solus bodies. But I don't think we knew that there were a million billion of them. All of which prompts the question, were the Asians responsible for these abominations, or was it the will of the Emperor? I must know which hand guides the Empire. Though I have given up my rank, I am yet a son of Garlemald, and I will fight for the future of my homeland. I mean, I guess you could say that's valid, but I don't know if it's valid to have a backup wing of a million clones. That much is more up for debate. I like the idea. I like that idea, though. Oh, I wasn't saying that they're sentient or anything. Just whether or not cloning is ethical is a whole debate in itself. Even if you're cloning yourself, I guess. I like the idea of very strongly committed to slapstick, Solace. That seems in character to me. It is time I return to the Hunting of Shadows. We should focus on our common foe. To reopen old quarrels now would serve no purpose. That seems fair. You saved my brother's life, so I'm willing to let sleeping dogs lie. 
But in truth, it's not my decision to make. We'll, we'll speak later, Asian. I mean, Emperor. I mean, Gaius is the second answer here. But I think Sucro would say this, and this is what I think. There are more important matters at hand. There was a time when I scorned those who placed their faith in false gods, even as I, in my blinkered conviction, place mine in Asian promises. Not only has the word shadow been said about three times by this point, <laughs> Asian line break hunter, I am a monster, coach. As some would say. This is also the second time someone has said the word blinkered today. Unlike yours, my strength of will and for whatever my that's worth was found wanting. We shall meet again, warrior of light. Okay, bye. Where are you where are you planning to go? Does your ship still function? Imagine so that was the infamous Black Wolf, an unexpected ally, to say the least. What if he just like so slowly walks over to his ship and dramatically gets in his ship and then it just doesn't work? And he just sort of stares at the console for like three hours. You could arguably be on the side of, I mean, in this particular moment, with his goal of... <laughs> yeah, exactly. A car engine stalling off screen. Perfect. Like, in this particular moment, in this particular aspect, he's definitely on our side. At least in terms of, like, fighting the Asians. I forgot about Beetle's pedaling. Wait, does Beetle is Beetle's shop powered by pedaling a bike because he's pedaling wares? Is it a was it a joke the whole time? Like in another way? Beyond how silly it is conceptually, was it also a pun? Wow. I never thought about that. <laughs> Oh, I see. I, I think they've done a pretty good job of making Gaius seem like a reasonable like person to be allied with at the moment. Granted, I don't know if that pun would work in the original Japanese, by the way, with regards to pedaling. But it certainly works in English. Also, speaking of that, uh, Tears of the Kingdom is in like two days, right? What the hell? What is time? What is time? Tears of the Kingdom. Release date. Yep, Tears of the Kingdom is in two days. Hello and welcome. We've just met. Gaius Van Bailsar, except he's just Gaius Bailsar now, and he explained Asians. I think it was I think it's very interesting that even if the player hadn't figured out who he is, the Warrior of Light figures out who he is immediately upon actually meeting him. But yeah, he just walked off to his car, and it's probably not gonna run. So he's just gonna be sitting awkwardly there for a while. And by car I mean airship. Oh, it does work. It was probably stalling that whole time, and he just got it to run. Well, I am content to leave the fine-tuning of the barrier to cleverer minds. Let us bid our friends from the Ironworks farewell, and see what can be done for Alphino back in Dorma. Gaius the Balesar? He's a Sonic the Hedgehog character now? Well, okay, bye. There he goes. Oh, also, Alphino has collapsed into the, the soul sleep or whatever. 
so that's bad. Even should our alliance send a contingent to Eorzea, also the Empire is going to invade Alamigo, that's also bad. I will stay here in Doma with the remainder of our forces. As much as I would enjoy taking Imperial heads at your side, we cannot leave our borders undefended. What uncanny timing that Master Alphno should be returned to us just as we were testing the barrier. I only hope a cure can be found for his malady. Oh, hello. Um, here's what happened so far. Uh, last time a l bunch of people were, like, basically going into comas and their souls seemed to be missing. We talked, we went and talked to Matoya about it. Um, we've learned that their ether is not traceable, it just sort of gets cut off suddenly. Um, yeah, Alphano has returned from Garlemald, but he was being carried by Shadow Hunter, who has been revealed to be Gaius Van Balesar, who survived the Praetorium from Realm Reborn, and he's just Gaius Balesar now, and he lives for revenge against the Asians. Uh, so he carried Alphino, who had passed out from the soul being taken to us when we were testing a barrier to keep out Imperial airships. Which incidentally does work. And also the Empire is planning to invade Alamigo. I think I covered everything? The War Council, the war council has ended in unanimous agreement. To forestall the Empire's expansion plans in this region, our allies are willing to send troops to fight in Eorzea. Oh, and Gaius also explained a little bit more about how Asians work. I see the rest of the, the alliance has departed. Alphano is safe, safely ensconced in a private chamber. My finest healer is examining him as we speak. I've spoken with the physician and there are no outward signs of illness. Alphano is lost in a sleep from which he cannot be awoken, just like the others. It seems that even the lands of the Empire were not far enough away to escape that cursed voice. Oh uh, yeah, we did learn the name of Emmet Selk, but we don't know anything about Emmet Selk yet. Also, we didn't learn anything about the white mask Asian, because he threw a white mask on the. No, he. Well, he had a. He had one, didn't he? Also, yeah, kinda. Oh, the white mask was his. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't figure that out. Uh, they did. They introduced Shadow Hunter, a patch ago, right? Or maybe two patches ago. Uh, it's also it is funny that you mentioned that because I did skip over the part where he was like, "We found a bunch of people who died from the the bio weapon Black Rose." And then Alizé was like, oh no, they're going to use that on Alamigo. And then Gaius said, don't worry, we infiltrated the facility and destroyed all of it off screen, so it'll take them a while to make more. Like, that's the most abruptly resolved plot point we've seen recently, I think. It was kind of funny. I share your frustration, Alizé, I do, but Alphano has returned to us alive and otherwise unharmed. All that remains is to find the means to wake him. Well, it resolved for now. He did say they could make more, but it would be slowed down. Resolved is a strong word, I guess. But I think my meaning was clear enough, especially now that I've clarified it by responding to people. <laughs> Until then, you can but fulfill your duties as a scion, yours and your brothers both. You're right, of course. There are arrangements to be made and little time to make them. I mean, it feels like Alphino has been there for a while, to be fair. Like, Alphino went left for Garlemald in 4.3, was gone 4.4, and now we're in 4.5 and he's back. Also keep in mind that there was a lot more real-time 
passing between these patches. So the pacing would have felt different in the moment than it does experiencing it all at once. So like, for the players playing these as it released, Alphano has seemed like he was in Garlemald for a lot longer. But then again, you could also think, like, if they're still claiming that all of this game happens within the span of a year, Alphano was in Garlemald for like two days or something, probably. So like, depend. it really depends on how you look at it. But I feel like he was there for a while. I, ca I already forgot that the captions kept calling Yatsuyu Yatsi. And uh, the, the name you're trying to think of is Asahi. Yeah, these things were definitely more staggered. Um, basically, any like point o patch, as it were, is the initial story of an expansion and lasts for a while. And then each point X was like every is like each point X was like how many months are there between point X patches usually like three to six depending so yeah but like we're about to get to 5.0 and that's going to be a lot more at once I don't know why I felt the need to explain expansions but still there are arrangements to be made and little time to make them. Just trying to clarify things. Don't mean to make anyone sound like they don't know things. To business then, my lord. Now we know Seriu's wall works as intended, but can we expect reinforcements from Alamigo? You most certainly can. Or for Alamigo, maybe. As promised, we will send troops to bolster our allies to in Eorzea without delay. Pray be aware, however, that they will not arrive without delay. Save for some few who boast teleportation magics, the bulk of our force must be transported by sea, a lengthy voyage for which the smaller vessels favored by the Confederacy are ill-equipped. Accordingly, I mean to enlist the assistance of the East Aldenard Trading Company in finding suitable ships. As for navigating the distances in question, we are in the happy position of being able to call upon those who plotted the course of my people's exodus to Eorzea. Beyond the procurement of ships, I think it unlikely that our East Aldenard friends will consent to any involvement in military operations, but I'm certain they will afford Alphano a berth aboard one of their vessels. I shall have a Chirurgian accompany him every ilm of the way to the Rising Stones. You have my thanks, Lord Hian. Nod. Yugiri, I will go on ahead with our friends to Alamigo. Enlist all those capable of teleportation and put them at the disposal of the Eorzean Alliance as soon as possible. They will form the Vanguard. Yes, my lord. This is exactly what we'd hoped for. Lys and the Alliance leaders will be glad indeed to, wel to welcome the combined strength of the East. Nod. Should we tell anybody about Gaius or should we wait for that, I wonder? Hmm. Meanwhile, at the Black Rose Chemical Plant. Oh, I guess we're not done with this yet. Even, like, for a little bit. We're here now. Yeah, they, they did bring up teleporting. Our Black Rose have been ruined, but the new plant is already under construction. We should have the first batch ready in time for the offensive, Your Radiance. Oh. Well, that was fast. Never mind, plot point unresolved. See that you do. Ah, yes, the infamous Black Crows. If I recall correctly, Gaius did not much care for the invention. Understatement. A ruthless and indiscriminate weapon indeed, this airborne poison. It seems you are capable of making decisions worthy of your bloodline. With no gift for sorcery, we Garleans must look to Magitech to even the odds. If it spares the needless deaths of our soldiers and serves the cause of this empire, there is no method I would not employ. How very noble of you. 
Truly, though, I must commend you for embracing your role as Emperor. You play the part of the determined ruler... well. Sometimes even I catch myself believing. Once again, I'm left wondering if the guards stationed nearby are, like, just required to stay silent about Solace wandering around talking about this kind of stuff. Do they get paid well for this? Probably not, right? A silent agent of death. Now that I think on it, Black Rose may well possess the perfect aspect. Yeah, probably. Slowly but surely, the deluge of light has worked upon the ether here in the source, and the gas should be most susceptible to its influence. Well, I shall leave you to your own devices. Go forth and bloody the land with your grand and glorious war. Can't believe Solace's Galvis just did the Eureka emote, more or less. I just... I just think this is a funny pose for him to be in. Time for him to saunter. While you do what, precisely? Saunter. That's what he's doing. Need you ask? I will be doing what all Asians do. Being a shit. I am well aware that your kind exists only to usher in the next calamity. But you seem oblivious to the harm your singular agenda causes to the Empire. I don't think he cares about that, Varus. You cannot have forgotten the events which followed your mortal demise. Our homeland was plunged into civil war for your failure to name a successor. The edifice you so carefully constructed was but a hair's breadth from collapse. Yeah, he probably wanted that. Are you he, truly so naive? He loves chaos. You thought me oblivious to the consequences of a departure so painstakingly timed? It was by design? Of course. I thought well, you figured this out. Of course it was. Though I will admit the resulting panic exceeded even my wildest expectations. But how can you be surprised? Throwing the world into disarray was the very purpose for which this nation was, as you say, so carefully constructed. He did already explain this. I guess Varus just didn't want to believe that part. My name is Emmett Selch and everything I've done is for the bit. You fool. You utter moron. It was just a prank, bro. Hey, we don't technically know that this is in itself yet. Just saying. It hasn't been directly stated. <laughs> but fair enough. We can assume from the knowledge we just learned recently that this is probably in itself. Because we did know there's a mysterious Asian who's like a big deal named Emmett Selk. And Solace was also like, I'm an Asian. So I guess we could put two and two together by this point without any problems. But still. Also a good pose for Solace to be in here. Just taking funny pictures of Solace today. He does a lot of posing. Now, if you have no further questions, I must be on my way. Time for sauntering. Since Whoops. we may not meet again in this lifetime, it would be remiss of me not to offer a word or two of gratitude. I really must thank you for this surplus of vessels. I can mold any host into my own image, but having bodies tailor-made for me in this fashion is so much less tiresome. Okay, he didn't do that you part himself. You dabbled in elegant cloning techniques, yes? 
It certainly is a compelling, not to mention entertaining, field of research. Okay, that wasn't With him, all though. all the options available, you chose the founding father on whom to experiment. You have a twisted streak to you, Varus. Like grandsire, like grandsire, hey? Yep. More posing. If events play out as planned, this will become something of a family enterprise. You will be the capstone of this world, I the anchor in the shard, and together we will give the lie to this star's fraudulent existence. <laughs> and now, now Varus is learning that his, as you say, war, <laughs> war crimes grandpa is kind of fucked up, like more than he thought. Anyway, hooray, our quest is complete. Yay, we did it. Come, let's return to Lise and share the good news about our Far Eastern reinforcements. Go on ahead, Sucro. I will join you in Alamigo with our advance party as soon as I can. Oh, right, this part. I was wondering when this happened. We must leave now to convene with Eorzea's leaders, and it may be some time before I return to Doma. Akuro, I leave you in command. My lord. I shall assemble an advance party with all haste and join you and Alamigo forthwith. I've just received word from Lys. The Alliance has established a base camp near Alamigo's northeastern border. Once we've arrived in the locks, we're to report to a resistance officer stationed in Porta Praetoria, who will point us in the right direction. Let's not keep them waiting. Nod. By the way, I've had an idea for a little while. Um, that I think once I get to Shadowbringers... Like, since I haven't seen all of Shadowbringers, if you count the point X patches as part of it, which I do. I'm going to start putting no spoilers in all caps in the in the title of every stream. And I might have to be a little bit harsher if anyone accidentally spoils something. If I learn how to do that. Oh, the Domen Restoration stuff, I did that. I forgot to mention that I did, in fact, do that when I was summing up what had happened so far. I did, in fact, uh, contribute the weekly. Thank you for thank you for checking, though. Someone is hiding over here. Who could that be? <laughs> thank you, Callie, for the silence. I guess. Callie's best impression of the the guards in the Empire witnessing Solace gallivanting about. Ah, you must be the Scion party I was told to look out for. If you'll follow me, I'll take you directly to Alliance Headquarters. I was expecting a, several cutscenes. Dot 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 dot. Correct. There's going to be a several cutscenes in sequence warning at some point today, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Solus is us Galavantus. Welcome back, you two. Greetings, Lord Here. Glad you could join us. Yeah. Glad to be here. I would have come sooner, were our own defense is not in question. But I am pleased to report that our soldiers are assembling for deployment to Alamigo as we speak. We're grateful for your support. Thanks to the efforts of our allies, it won't be long before we've established defensive positions on this front as well. <clears throat> we have some good news too. 
Elfino has come back to us. As for the bad news... Explaining... Alizé is probably so going to get Alfino taken out within the next five minutes or something. Elsa is alive and hunting Asians, and the Empire is planning to poison us all with toxic gas. Does that sound about right? Yep, that's about it. Ordinarily, any one of those things would have left me in shock. But the way things have been lately, it's all starting to seem pretty normal. Getting back to your report, are we sure this Black Rose is the weapon Maxima was talking about? It fits the description. And it seems we have Alfino to thank for sparing us an early demonstration of its effectiveness. I have a feeling this won't be the last time his bravery in the Empire will serve us here in Eorzea. Yeah, that line from Lise there really kind of makes it very clear how badly everything is going. Just a whole bunch of horrible stuff had happened and any one of those individual things would have been shocking but now it's all starting to seem normal that's that line's kind of a lot honestly the threat of an unknown weapon has had us all on edge but now that we know what we're dealing with we can take steps to defend against it nod as for gaius i'm not sure what to think Am I happy he's alive? Not in the slightest. Am I happy he's hunting Asians? Aye, I'd have to say I am. Oh, speaking of Garlians you didn't expect to see, we have a tale of our own, as it happens. When we sent envoys to the Imperial Army to request talks, they returned with the message that Varisos Galvus would be attending. Surprise. The Emperor himself. Well, Varus did sanction the Popularis peace mission. But knowing that an Asian walks in his son's skin, I do not see how we can trust him or anyone from that nest of vipers. The Alliance would proceed with negotiations regardless, if only to give ourselves more time to prepare. We do, however, require your cooperation. All right, we go and talk to the Emperor. We make sure to talk to all of the Imperial soldiers around. Some of them are probably going to want to fight us. We have to make sure we talk to enough of them so we get all the accessories. That's right, it's time for more FF6. You didn't think Stormblood was done being FF6, did you? Uh, right, yes. So, because this is also an a FF6 scenario. For the talks to go forward, the Empire has requested that a member of the Scions be present. There'll be a representative from each Alliance nation, of course, but I'm afraid we have to ask that you come along too. I can't wait to get the Tentinabulum so that my MP restores as I move. I think that's what it's called. Is that it? Am I correct there? I think so. Also called Tintinabar. Oh, it restores HP with each step taken. Also called Cat's Bell sometimes, apparently. Huh. And there's there's an illustration of it that's literally like a cat's collar with a little bell necklace. I didn't know this was secretly cat collar this whole time. What? What? Surprise cat presence. Also about to happen to Varus, the surprise cat. Well, I don't know if he'll be surprised. He probably knows Sucre is a cat by now. Who doesn't? God, Lise. You know how much I hate politics. But then... What choice do I have? Alphano and the others aren't going to do it. And then Alizé immediately gets taken out because at least the voice knows she doesn't want to do politics meeting. Maybe. Very well. I shall attend as the Scion's representative. 3-2-1 headache. 
In case you're wondering why I didn't ask you, the Empire also requested the presence of Eorzea's champion. Yeah, they definitely know that Sucro is a cat by this point. If they know who Sucro is. I'm not fond of politics either. I'll be there. I mean, I can't not. That's settled then. We don't know what Varus means to bring to the table, or why he wants you there, but having you close at hand will make all the difference. That is true. Varus directly met her. I forgot. 3, 2, 1, headache. The meeting will take place not on the yet. border. Anticipating an early assault, we mean to position the bulk of our forces nearby. The Alliance leaders should already be on their way. Once you're ready, we can head out and join them. I forget when the headaches start again. I'm just sort of guessing at this point. Because they're going to, clearly. If Charlian could not negotiate peace with the Empire, I rather doubt war can be avoided here. But every moment we steal for our preparations will count in the final reckoning. Is Emperor Varus enthralled to the Asians? That is the question. Should the Empire decide to ignore the rules of Parley, we could be fighting far sooner than we'd like. Keep your weapons close. Well, I don't suppose it's polite to keep an Emperor waiting too long, shall we? Parley with the Emperor? I guess. Look, they even have a really long table for us to sit at. All in a row, facing the Emperor, just like Final Fantasy VI. Emperors love setting up tables this way. Now, if we start getting asked questions with three separate answers... I'm pretty sure this this must be an FF6 reference to some degree, right? Because they've made a lot of them during Stormblood. Anyway, hello there, Varus. Esteemed representatives of the Eorzean Alliance. On behalf of the Galian Empire, I thank you for inviting me here today. As this parley was convened at your request, I invite you to speak first. Very well, Your Radiance. I, Nanimo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of Ul, should be pleased to oblige you. As recent events in Alamigo and Doma have made plain, the subjugation and exploitation of neighboring nations is not a sustainable policy. Should this day end in war, you may very well defeat us. But you will never extinguish the people's desire for freedom. Though it may not be in our lifetime, there will be another revolution, another war, and the cycle will continue. Doma has entered into a concord with the nations of Eorzea, a partnership wherein we recognize one another as equals. Nanamo has become powerful. Garlemald could be afforded similar treatment. You need only set aside your ambitions and join us in paving a path towards peace. I didn't catch Kane Sinna's expression. <laughs> you will not win me over with sophistry, Your Grace. As you know only too well, this alliance lacks the strength to keep the peace within its own borders. Even now, your struggles with the Beastmen continue unabated. I had to look up what sophistry meant. <laughs> The use of fallacious arguments, especially with the intention of deceiving. Sophistry. Thank you, random Google voice. I had to look it up. I was an English major once, but that doesn't mean I know words. Yeah. I'm also glad they stopped calling them that. At least, like, they've switched it to tribal quests for the quests as well. Oh yeah, 
I'm just now realizing that Kanae-sena's current expression is very visible at the moment. She does look rather mad. Divided, you sow this fertile soil with the seeds of your differences and reap naught but discord and chaos for your trouble. Eorzea must be united under one leader, one purpose. I would offer you both and bring an end to your strife. Gridania has been at war with another city-state more recently than anyone else? I don't think I know exactly to what you're referring. With all due respect, Your Radiance, the only thing that you offered the people of Alamigo was fear and hopelessness. Ah. Uh, I don't remember details about the Mad King at all either. <laughs> The citizens of Dorma can also attest to the meager arms of imperial rule. There is no purpose to be found in a life of oppression, each day more uncertain than the last. Nod. Our people are willing to die for their freedom. A great many already have, and countless more will, if we don't put an end to this madness here and now. Oh, right. Mad King of Alamigo. Right, right, gotcha. Forgot. So, yeah, my memory is bad. I'm, I'm sure this has become clear over time. It's making it difficult to hold all of the pieces of this story together in my brain, but it's still worth experiencing it again. And, well, experiencing the parts I haven't experienced yet for the first time, of course. We brought order and stability to your lives. This madness and bloodshed is of your own making. You broke the peace, not Garlemald. This negotiation is going poorly. Peace. Order. You kill our peoples, despoil our lands, take everything that is ours. And what? You expect us to lick the boot that grinds our faces into the dirt? I think that's a different MMO with the Halloween dimension. <laughs> Is that Guild Wars? I think that's... it might be Guild Wars. I've never participated in a Halloween event in Guild Wars for some reason. But yeah, this negotiation's going poorly. I expect you to weigh the costs. To recognize that countless lives have been lost on both sides in pursuit of a greater good, and to not squander all we have achieved in a fit of petulance. Varys, you have no idea what you're talking about. Except for the fact that you do, and your you're... Radiance. I fear I can personally attest to the dangers of pursuing one's vision with such righteous fervor. Varys knows exactly what he's talking about because he's not trying to actually negotiate this. I'm pretty sure he wants this war to happen. So he's mostly just provoking us, probably. For a thousand years, the Holy See of Ishgard waged war with dragons. A thousand years of sacrifice, of sorrow and hate, in which we bathed in the blood of friend and foe alike. Had it gone on any longer, we may well have drowned. Yet we have chosen to raise ourselves out of this bloody spiral, and have since made peace with our former enemy. So I understand. No doubt the dragons were more receptive to your overtures in the wake of their leader's demise. You speak of peace, yet use war to achieve it. Your father would not have bothered to obscure his intent with honeyed words. He understood that strength is all that matters in the end. Okay, yeah, 100% just trying to provoke everybody. Very clear. What do you mean dragons are like that?
Without his clarity of vision, I can but wonder what will become of Ishgard and her people. Oh, right. Yeah. There was a time when Galamal too lacked a leader of conviction. Weak and unable to wield magic, we were at the mercy of the strong from whom we sought refuge in the bitter cold of the north. Were it not for the discovery of Ceruleum and the subsequent development of Magitech, we might never have gained the power to take back that which was rightfully ours. You speak as if your people were the first to have been driven from their homes. Limsa Laminsa was built by wayward souls in search of a place to call their own. On the shores of Vilbrand we found it. And from those humble beginnings did we grow and flourish. And all without robbing our neighbors of their liberty. So saith the pirate. Am I to believe that you simply asked the kobolds to yield up their lands and that they were happy to oblige you? That you did not drive them out like rats in the hold of one of the many ships seized by your privateer? I will concede that after centuries of exile, reclamation may be mistaken for invasion. Nevertheless, it is not. And those who till stolen soil have no right to object when cast out in turn. Varus just has a counter for everybody prepared, basically. <laughs> and, yeah, um... Limsa did do a fair bit of piracy. So, um. Your uncompromising nature rivals that of the Ixil. They too lament circumstances which they themselves perpetuate. Were they but to embrace peace, we would welcome them with open arms. Indeed, some few have done just that and now receive of the Twelve's Woods bounty. Would that your people might learn from their example. <laughs> you dare compare us to the Birdmen? You who thought to invoke the Twelve and threaten all of creation. I came here in the hope of finding some speck of common ground, but I see now these discussions will accomplish nothing. I... Speaking of doubt, I highly doubt, like I was saying, that Varus came here in the hope of finding anything resembling a speck of common ground. He's here to provoke everybody. I'm, like, pretty sure. Because... Uh, Asians want war to happen. Despite what you people may believe, I am not wont to choose the sword over the olive branch. Tis but a pity men are loath to accept one without first being shown the other. So, I'm attributing a lot of Varus's intent to other people, basically. I feel like it's difficult to know exactly what Varus himself actually believes and wants when Asians all over clearly plotting most of this. Wait, I beg you. This meeting was supposed to be a chance to find a way forward together, not to bemoan the missteps which brought us here. Please, if you truly consider violence a last resort, there must be a way we can come to an agreement. As Mistress Alizé says, we did not come here to bicker over the past, 
but to discuss how we might strive towards a brighter future. Emperor Varys, may I suggest a short recess, that all present might compose themselves prior to beginning anew? This also happens in the Final Fantasy VI version of this. This is the part where we talk to all the soldiers and get the cat's bell or whatever that I've learned that the accessory is sometimes. I pray this intermission will suffice to move these talks in a more constructive direction. Well, seems to be going pretty badly so far. For years have we warred with the Empire and with no end in sight. A parlay such as this represents a unique opportunity and I would not squander it with bitter words. Why do I get the feeling the Emperor is hiding something? Varys holds fast to his ideals just as I knew he would. He would not- he will not be swayed from this path. I've also just realized that we went into this with the intention of stalling for time, at least. And Varys is probably doing exactly the same thing in addition to provoking all of us because he's buying time for more Black Rose to be produced. So... Really, we're both stalling. I do wonder had I do wonder I do much wonder at Emperor Varus's decision to attend these negotiations. It is plain he has no intention of hearkening to our entreaties, but what then is his goal? Tis true that Limsa Lominsa's beginnings were not wholly honorable, but our old wrongs do not make the Empire's deeds right. Whatever rebuttal I had in mind was lost when Varus mentioned my father. The man is certainly skilled at keeping his opponents off balance. For a moment I feared our talks would descend into violence there and then. Alize speaks of her dislike for politics, but her honest plea may very well have prevented an early battle. Oh, they don't let me jump over the table. I wanted to go sit in the Emperor's throne for a second. And be like, the Emperor's chair here, and be like, he he he. Sucro is also aligned with Gradania, at least in terms of like, free company and where she started. Though, in Sucro canon, she probably started in Limsa, actually. Whatever. Phew, this is really not my forte. After his Radiance's little performance, it was all I could do not to swear at him. I honestly don't know how I ended up playing the mediator. I just ask, ask myself what Alphino would have done and tried my best to do the same and by some miracle it worked. But there really is no common ground to be found with that man, nor do I think he looked for any. So the question becomes, what did he come here to do? Because you may be certain it wasn't to make peace. Like I said, provoke us and stall for time. <sighs> Whatever it is, I can't make it out. Not yet, at least. We do have a little time before the parlay is due to reconvene, though, so why not try consulting our illustrious leaders? Mayhap they have some insight to share. Oh. I will say one thing for this Varus. He's well-versed in Eorzean history. His interest in our affairs is that of a beast in its prey. The Conqueror would know his enemies. All should know their enemies, yet there is much and more we do not know of the Empire. I'm sure Varus would be happy to tell you more, actually, yeah. Ask him about the Empire. Ah, you would have me ask the Emperor himself? Well, mayhap there is some wisdom to that, or in that. If we can skirt the storm of his displeasure, we may yet come to our answers, even if it does mean sailing close to the wind. Ah, Merlvib, I knew those nautical metaphors would be in the scene somewhere. I didn't, but I should have. If nautical nonsense be something you wish.
Why, why do I get the feeling that the Empire, the Emperor is hiding? Oh, right, I already talked to you. I'm supposed to talk to you. Twelve, have mercy. But for Lady Alizé's timely interjection, we might well have come to blows at the negotiating table. Not that Emperor Varus left us a great many options. Is unconditional surrender all that he will accept, do you think? Ere he arrived, I'd have, yes. I'd have said yes. But having heard him speak, I cannot help but think he came with some other end in mind. Exactly, he's building up to something, I know it. Hmm, how then should we approach the rest of the parley? Have you anything to say, Warrior of Light? Say nothing of Xenos or the Asians, or invite Varus to explain himself. I feel like some of these choices are... I feel like... Having to make all of these choices here... Whether or not they actually impact things is also kind of an allusion to how the Final Fantasy VI se segment works, because you did have to choose a variety of options. Invite Varus to explain himself. You believe he is more apt to reveal the truth if we put him at his ease. Mayhap you're right. Thank you, Sucro. Also, it's kind of funny to imagine that Sucro has these suggestions because she knows that villains love to monologue from personal experience. And emperors, too. They love monologuing. Let him monologue and we'll learn what he's about. This parlay was never like to bring peace, but I had hoped to learn something of Emperor Varus' relationship with the Asians. As said we all, yet if he is in league with them, he's not like to volunteer the fact, and if he's not, how much weaker would his position seem for their presence? If we are to broach that particular subject, you, we will need to be subtle. <sighs> would that I knew more of the man. If you would indulge me, Lord Hien, you received an imperial education, did you not? Is it true that the Emperor's will is considered absolute? There is no higher authority in all of Garlemald, nor else in the heavens come to that. Veneration of the gods is forbidden, the only worship permitted being that of his radiance's own person. That sounds suspicious. The same could be said of all religions. But enough talk. Time for more talk. Um. That does sound suspiciously like a religion. I share your disdain for their hypocrisy. Even as they denigrate the idea of faith, they revere their leader with the fervor others reserve for the divine. It is a flaw common to much of the doctrine they fed us. Logical on the surface, perhaps, but contradictory upon closer examination. I wonder if a discussion of the various discrepancies might prompt Varus to reveal something. You've spoken with everyone, then. Good. Now all that remains is to await the pleasure of the Emperor and hope we fare better at the second attempt. I don't think I quite follow what you mean. Now then, who would have the floor? Before we resume, I wish to offer you an apology. After you graciously accepted our invitation to discuss an armistice, we have done naught but rebuke you at every opportunity. I believe I speak for all of us when I say we are deeply sorry for our discourtesy. When I said I don't entirely know what I meant, or what you meant, I meant like the realization that people will worship. I'm not entirely show, sure where you're going with that is all. I'll admit your familiarity with our affair surprised me, and served to remind me how little I know of yours. Also, I, I forgot to mention Nod, because Emperor Varus nodded. That's not what I got out of that conversation, is all. I got that they were instructed to do that, not that they did that of their own will. You make it sound like they chose to do that because there was no alternative. Or because they weren't allowed to worship gods or whatever. But it was clearly like, it's just what the Empire tells you to do. From... okay. I misunderstood then. I just feel like the, the, the inclination to worship doesn't have much to do with it when they're being told to, is all. I think 
think all here can understand the desire to reclaim one's homeland, but why expand further? That is my question. If I may, the answer can be found in the Imperial Doctrine they took great pains to impart to my people. Recognizing the threat icons posed to the world, Solus Zos Galvus decreed that they were to be eradicated. To this end, he began a campaign to unite all lands under the Garlean banner. Or so we were taught. Yet the Emperor only reached the burn, the Baron said to have been laid waste by icons, after conquering all the lands that lay between. What is more, I am quite certain the practice of summoning was not nearly so widespread in the days before the Empire's founding. When you put it like that, it all starts to sound like an excuse, doesn't it? But to distract from what? Why are you really waging this war? Oh, that's a, that's a good shot there. Finally, you ask the right question. I can but hope you heed mine answer and at last accept the righteousness of our cause. Well, at least we're getting him to talk. My goal is this. To return the world to the way it once was. Oh. The way it was always meant to be. Your goal is the Asian's goal. Got it. In doing so, mankind will be made whole once more. I don't know if we knew this was the Asian's goal in like all of this detail. I don't remember what I'm supposed to know. But no I think the Asians have spoken about from that. The dissension born of our differences. There will be but one race, a perfect race, mm. as we were when time began. Varus, when you put it like that, you sure sound like, uh, bad. What in Rolga's name are you talking about? I am talking about the origins of the star, of the source and its 13 reflections. Did we know there were 13? Probably. At the instant of the great sundering, t'was not only the world that was shattered, but mankind itself. Thus were we divided into myriad races, each with its own unique imperfections. That is why man looks upon his neighbor and feels fear and hatred, why he wages war, why he kills his brother. Sucro hates this. You all in your own way have proven as much today. The peace you seek is but a fleeting solution to a fundamental problem. One which calls for more drastic measures. To bring about everlasting peace, our worlds must be rejoined. That is the goal the Empire would see realized. The glorious future unto which we shall one day shepherd mankind. Okay, so he does buy into the Asian beliefs. Worlds. He does buy into the Asian beliefs somewhat, unless he's just a really convincing actor right now. But he sure sounds like this is really his goal. I have heard this tale of the source and its reflections before. Are these not the self-same desires as the Asians? Emperor Varus, do not trust in their words. They will lead you to your doom. My father thought to use them, but in the end, he succumbed to their temptations. He embraced summoning like so many other pawns before him. Do not tell us you mean to do the same. <laughs> to be a pawn, free from the burden of choice, would be a blessing. But I forswore that privilege the day I learned that the Galian Empire was built by the hand of an Asian. Oh, you're just telling us this now. What? It 
Yes. My grandsire, the former emperor, is of their number. And who better to build an empire capable of bringing about the calamitous change we desire? Oh, now I'm getting the impression that Varus is... Varus realizing that the entire empire was built by Asians kind of made him, like, lose it a little bit, maybe. Would you condemn me for this alliance? For bowing to the will of these shadowy masters when the prize is true and lasting peace? <laughs> your prize is a lie, your master's demons, or I will stop you in the Asians, no matter the cost. One of these is, fuck your negotiations, I'm out. And the other one is, you're still wrong, but also, like, I'm not directly saying fuck you just yet. <laughs> yeah. I think Sucro would recognize that they're still technically trying to negotiate something and not say the latter one. Your prize is a lie, your master's demons! I think that's a little bit poetic for Sucro, but still. I come not to conquer, but to liberate. To free man from the prison of divergence. Imagine a world united. One perfect race beneath a single standard. That's possible, yeah. That Suko read that in the book. Very good camera pan to put the Garlemald uh, logo, insignia, whatever, in frame during this line. With the, the very harsh lighting on Varus here. Very strong and camera and lighting. Whose might these servants of darkness and light would fly as leaves in a storm, never again to meddle in man's affairs. Uh, Varus? So wait, your plan is to do the Asians' plan to reunite the world and make everybody one perfect race or whatever you're saying, and then then be like, fuck off, Asians, but you've already done the thing. This doesn't make any sense. I mean, of course it doesn't make any sense. We would be the masters of our own fate. I bid you join me, not as subjects of Garamond, but of a new nation. And together we shall win freedom for ourselves and generations yet unborn. Yeah. Except, like, he does believe that like Thornton, except he's kind of like, we'll do everything the Asians say and complete their plan and then betray them. It'll totally work. Even though, like, the, the general idea of reuniting the worlds and people and whatnot would mean that there weren't really, like... I don't know if there would be anyone to betray at that point. I, hmm. Regardless, the idea is bad, and Varus is bad, and the idea of one superior race is always bad. You want to trigger another half dozen calamities? You can't be serious! Have you forgotten how many died? There will be no one left! Do you truly imagine we would aid you in your bloodletting? It is unthinkable, unconscionable. Everyone else realizes they also have to stand up. <laughs> and what is the alternative? To be as cattle waiting for slaughter? I would have us work together that we might take fate into our own hands. Into your hands, perhaps.
Remember the warriors of the darkness? Of the other worlds, your radiance. With every calamity, you obliterate a star and every soul that dwells on it. Oh. We'll do the Asian plan after killing the Asians. Oh, that's... Technically not as bad of a plan, but still bad. Still very bad. Also, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about how Varus believes his own race inferior. Better in like heavy air quotes. Because <laughs> obviously everything is still bad. To the Asians, we are all but tiny, momentary specks within an indifferent universe. We cannot hope to oppose them until we have been made whole once more. Yeah, exactly. Zero, more like zero to zero point zero zero one or something. Maybe a few more zeros in there. Are these truly the words of Garlemald's ruler? He does understand the Asian's view. That is true. The flaws and foibles which you so abhor are what make us who we are. Every nation, even yours, Emperor Varys, is made whole through the combination of these imperfections. The strengths of one compensating for the weaknesses of another. While it is true that man succumbs all too often to anger and avarice, he may yet overcome his baser instincts through the forming of bonds with others fostering community and cooperation. That the protector of an empire should not only reject these fundamental truths, but seek to change them at so dear a cost to life is indefensible. Such a man is not fit to govern. And you, warrior of light, would you refuse me as well? Yes. I cannot condone such a loss of life, or we can defeat the Asians as we are. I mean, she's literally defeated some of them. And we've already covered this point, so we can defeat the Asians as we are. I've done it. Group nod. Group nod too. It would seem the Alliance is of one mind on this matter. You Eorzeans never cease to disappoint me. Though I suppose I have only myself to blame for expecting more from savages. Anyway, Varus Soscalvus, fuck off with your vaguely Nazi-like bullshit. Perhaps not so vaguely. Piss off. This discussion is at an end. I bid you make ready for our next meeting. It will not be at the negotiating table. For some reason, this line makes me imagine, what if we used a negotiating table as a battering ram against them? Just because of this line, as a last little fuck you of a pun or something, I don't know. I don't think that would be helpful. But there must be some scenario in which someone has done that. Or could do that. Anyway, uh, that... We learned a lot of information. His grand plan is to bring about more calamities? This is insanity! This madman must be stopped at all costs. We suspected Asians meddled in the shadows of the Empire, but the truth is far beyond my wildest imagining. 
At least now we know the face of our enemy and need not hesitate to strike at its heart. I'm glad we arrived in time to aid in the battle. Though our vanguard may be small, these few are our chosen elite. The finest warriors in the far, far east. The Empire exists to wage war, and war it shall have, but its vast armies pour in like the tides themselves. This could very well be the greatest military threat Eorzea has ever faced. I refuse the Emperor's words with all of my being. What justice is there in an ideal that demands the sacrifice of so many? Now that we've learned the Emperor's true purpose, war has become an inevitability. Tis times like these I curse my own uselessness in battle. Yeah, we learned a lot of important information. So we did get something out of that. The Temple Knights have deployed in full strength. Eorzea's future is Ishgard's future, and our fates ride upon the outcome of this conflict. The Asians are terrible and terrible beings indeed that they would found an entire nation to further their dark designs. It would seem that the Empire's history is as sinister as Ishgard's own. My first engagement is Flame General, and it's full-scale war with the Empire. I feel some measure of nervousness, of course, but I swear I will make Father proud in the battles to come. Send me to the front lines, if you please. We'll give the Imperials a taste of the Maelstrom's cannons, not to mention my axe. It makes a twisted kind of sense that the Empire was built by the Chaos Bringers themselves. The revelation yet rattles me, but now we know our enemies are one and the same. Now that we know our enemies are one and the same, we have a target upon which to unleash the full force of the Alliance. I came back to find Doma's advance party ready and waiting for battle, so as worrying as our little chat with the Emperor was, it did buy enough time for at least some of our allies to arrive. The Face of War. It's time for hollering that wave once more. I'm not sure what I was expecting from our meeting with the Emperor, but it wasn't that. Still, at least we know now what he's really after. I. A future built on a mountain of bodies. I too want the Asians dead, but not at any cost. The last of the reinforcements from Dorma arrived not long ago. I pray it will be enough. Given the Emperor's stated goal, this is a battle we can ill afford to lose. If the Galleons come in force, we may not have much say in the matter, even with our combined strength. We knew from the first that the odds would be against us. But if there is even the slightest chance of victory, we must do everything in our power to seize it. We must seize it, full stop. Here, here. Three, two, one headache. Maybe not yet. <laughs> The two of you are to join an irregular unit and support the main host. I won't bother asking if you're minded to fight. Nod. After coming this far, how could I not? Three, two, one headache. And for once, maybe not. No one around to countermand me. Not that they would. Not even my brother. But we all know who really made the difference. Ready to frighten some Garleans? <laughs> We all know Sucro will destroy. Nod. I wouldn't want to be on their side. Might I ask you to accompany the Dorman contingent? They are strangers here, and your presence would do much to raise their spirits. Seems like a good idea to me. Nod. Nod. We would be honored. When our people stride out with you in their midst, I dare say the Eorzeans will feel an ilm taller themselves. High spirits have a way of spreading. Ah, uh, what I wouldn't give to join you. But my duties as field commander will not allow it. 
I'll leave the front lines in your capable hands. Three, two, one, headache. Not yet. Comrades, ready your arms. The hour of battle has come. May the crystal guide us to victory! Yeah! Since the others couldn't be here, we'll have to fight twice as hard. If Alphano wakes to find the Imperials have won, I shall never hear the end of it. <laughs> it's strange. I thought I would be terrified when the fighting started. I should be terrified. But with you at our side, I can't help feeling everything is going to be all right. Three, two, one, headache? So please. Don't you dare leave me alone. Gasp. I won't, Alize. No matter what happens, we have to survive together. Sucro is determined. But was also surprised by this. The Gimlet Dark is now accessible. It's almost dungeon time, everyone. But first, I will be right back.
Hello, I am here. While we are here on the BRB screen, the intermission, I would like to update everyone on some matters that were discussed in the Omega stream that are tangentially related, some more than others. Number one, I brought up the idea of playing as Sucro in Street Fighter VI. Here's a picture of her blinking for her ID again. And most people seemed to be in favor of this idea, but after thinking about it, I've decided that I would be probably upset by Sucro not being a cat. Just looking at Sucro not having cat ears for the entire time, the cat ear headband barely counts. This would be incorrect. This would be wrong. Fundamentally counter to Sucro and how she says she's a cat all the time. So I set about trying to make a different character of some kind. And what I've ended up with so far, if I can find the picture in here somewhere, is... Where, where is she at? There's all the Magician's Quest. There she is. Yeah, it's not Sucro. Everyone seemed in favor of it before, but then I decided no. But yeah, this is the character I've come up with so far. She's totally normal and not an undead zombie, probably. I don't know why this is what I ended up defaulting to when I set about to try and make an interesting character with the character creator. But... As everyone weighed in with their opinions on Street Fighter Sucro, I feel like it's only fair to let everyone weigh in with their opinions on this zombie lady here, who I have arbitrarily named Clarice for now. Second point of discussion while Clarice here is sitting on the screen. Are you saying someone is cooler than Sucro? No, I'm, I'm kidding, but it, it's fine. Zombies good? All right. Second point of discussion, I also mentioned on the uh, the Omega stream that I was starting to become unsure about the Final Fantasy 1 inspired armor that I had planned to use for Shadowbringers, and I was starting to like, try and put together something else. Uh, I have put together something else, and I think it's maybe like one of the coolest outfits Sucro has had, honestly. I posted it a little bit on Twitter, but I'm not going to do more than mention that right now and say stay tuned for the reveal of the new outfit, I guess. <laughs> Unless you've seen it already, then stay tuned for the the other reveal of the outfit, I guess. It's a really good outfit, I think. But yeah, the reason the, the Final Fantasy 1 fighter style one bothered me in the end was because it didn't have really, like, it had very short sleeves, and I just didn't want that to be the case. It gave me this feeling of this will bother me eventually, and that feeling itself led to it bothering me because I couldn't convince myself that it was fine. Anyway, all of my... whatever that is aside... All of my honestly completely understandable issues, probably, that I don't need to defend, aside. I guess it's time for the Gimlet Dark, huh? I need to remind myself more often that I don't need to, like, defend or excuse myself in cases like that. Oh. I have it said to explore mode. <laughs> I don't need to justify or explain my issues or whatever. So let's see what sort of armaments we've got around here. Axe. Many spears. We seem to be favoring a particular third of the weapon triangle, at least in this part of the camp. Got all the banners over here. I think it's funny to imagine that... Oh, this is four separate tables. I didn't realize that. 
I was going to say, I think it's funny to imagine that like this map table setup is the same one and they just carry it around everywhere. Oh, this is 79. That's the level I am at. I'm currently equipped with one piece of level 79 armor that I shouldn't know about at this time, but yeah. I will do whatever it takes to save my patients. Patients, whatever it takes, says this random medical personnel person. Good for you. Like, sincerely, thank you for your assistance. But yeah, Paladin is currently level 79. A very, very small of ex amount of experience towards 80. We do have a lot of cannon. Maybe some of the lances are ac for axe reavers? Maybe. Is that a property of lances or a property of people wielding them? Anyway, uh, yeah, war, war is here. And here are today's brave warriors. None of them are a warrior, like, specifically. Oh no, my portrait. <laughs> nah, beans. Ah, oh, geez. Oh yeah, I already have I already have tons of Endwalker gear from my retainers, don't worry. I have fending gear all of, for the entire rest of the level range. Pretty sure. Okay, this is the end for right now. Oh, is a weapon an older an older fire emblem? Because I'm pretty sure that Axe Reaver or Lance Reaver or whatever are like traits that characters have in newer ones. Or similar things. Anyway. I don't know the state of that in the most recent Fire Emblem. Spread out and be wary of artillery fire. Keep to the north. We'll head off their troops to the south. Dog alert. Oh, is it? I think I might have set up my controller settings in such a way where I can't target NPCs when I have my weapon drawn. So I don't think I, I don't think I will have that particular problem, actually. I'm pretty sure that's a setting you can choose that I've chosen. Oh, wait, we're going this way. Whoops. I got confused somehow. Mark 3B, Magitek Colossus.
Oh, you just do that again, huh? You really like that attack, don't you? I'm trying to point the boss in a consistent direction, but I'm not sure if I'm actually managing to do that. I may have gotten confused at some point. Yeah, I think I was doing that. That was my goal, anyway. I think I got everyone. Yeah. I just had another one of those moments where I suddenly thought to myself, I really like Paladin, and I think that's a good sign. Oh, I wonder if I could have continued going, actually. I don't know when that exploded. I might have accidentally not done the full pull there. I really like all the different motifs that are happening in this dungeon's theme, by the way. There's like a whole bunch of different late motifs happening all together. Oh, do I need that? I don't know. And now we get to see everyone fighting. I hold back. Brace yourself, they've called for reinforcements. You get to run past all of the people fighting, just like in Alamigo and like fight with some of them and stuff. It's very cool. So they just have the scorpion again, I guess. As you do. Keep moving, we'll hold them here. And hey, look, it's Prometheus. Um, I don't remember if we fought the 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 weird what was it called? The the drill tank thing from 6 before? But this is like the recolor of that that happens later in 6 somewhere, I think. Well, I forget what the original thing is called already. I forgot if we've already fought this boss, but they're referencing a uh, palette swap of it by naming it that, I believe. Oh. Either that or we haven't actually fought the other one, and we're just now fighting this, and this is the whole reference to Final Fantasy VI already? I don't... My memory, again. But yeah, also definitely a Final Fantasy VI boss here. Runic, unfortunately. Unless 
Unless any of my uh, mitigation counts as using runic. It's sort of like it. I should pull this more towards the center so people have more room for that. You underestimate me! Hello, Emmerich. I'm here to steal your kill. I think this is as far as I can go right now. You seem troubled, friends. Not getting tired, are you? Targets the NPCs, that's fun. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, I needed. I pulled the enemy more towards the center so that people could do positional stuff better. I'm glad I realized that. Realizing that makes me feel, oh, maybe I'm okay at tank. Well, I guess we're going this way now. I haven't used my invincibility yet. Fear not, help is on the way. As one. I forgot to use my tank buff food again. There we go. Yeah, I know, but like, it's also a free cooldown, so like, why not use it? There's no reason to not use it. It's just like Mega Elixir. You don't, you don't have to save it. You might as well just use it. Rubricatus. Ah. NPC power. Thank you, Kane Sena. Oh wait, that was not a real enemy. That was just that was that was just for Hien. An explosive, it must be stopped. Behold the art of the shinobi! This day you die! Hell yeah. Go on, Sucro, leave these soldiers to us. I really want to know who who's the who's the duty support team for this gonna be? Is it gonna be the generics again? That would actually make sense in this case, I think. Yeah, this dungeon is cool, in general. Oh yeah, these two. Wait, are these the two... These savages bested our vanguard? Impressive. Are these the two guards that are paid to not say anything? But in the end, they're only that, savages. Now let us be brief, his radiance awaits. 
We have to get back to our ship standing at the throne and saying nothing. Behold, Garlemald's two most popular fighting styles together at last. Anya, take the field. Very well, I leave the artillery file to you, fire to you. Commence bombardment and prepare to strike. They will not escape. Oh, what? It's not what I expected. Ow. This is also the last time that we'll hear Triumph for a while. This theme that's happening right now. This is the last Triumph for a while. Or like, forever? Probably, in terms of stream content. Impressive, Anya. Let us engage them together. They cannot hope to evade us both. Yeah. The power of tennis. They high fived. Anya, fall back. I'm glad they high five. Very well, leave the artillery to me. I've arbitrarily decided to use Divine Veil now. Ready the Cerulean tanks. Oh, wait, I didn't use these. Deploying now. Well. I'm gonna say we should probably not stand near those. Seems we have no choice, Julia. You should feel honored, savages. Few are they who have witnessed this twice. Oh, you're doing this again? Oh. And even fewer still who have witnessed this. Farewell, savages. I guess there's, I should probably be focusing one. Who will stand next to the Emperor's throne now? We have served our purpose. Come, we shall withdraw for now. Okay, they're alive. It's like a smoke smoke bomb, but made of light instead. Joy. I got a commendation.
I don't really always need to say that, but I do it anyway. There you are, and none the worse for wear. Three to one headache. Indeed, I had hoped we might do more to help, but there seems to be no one left to fight. A tactical withdrawal, perhaps? I won. We should give chase. Finish them off while we have the chance. Three to one headache. Any other surprise when they wait to find the war already won? That time I was right. Uh. The light will expunge all life. Only you can forestall the calamity. Throw wide the gates. No, 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 not like. Well, and yeah, the warrior of light just tends to do that, I guess. Carve through armies. Oh no, don't tell me. Are you all right? Uh, un yeah. Quickly, Unfortunately, Alize is not. Sucro is still, still awake, but. Return of Triumphant music that's not really appropriate at this time. Because it's just encampment.bgm. Alize is being cared for at the infirmary. Would that there were more we could do for her. So the Garleans have been routed, have they? Well done. Though this exchange was no more than a test of our strength, like as not. They won't be taking any chances now that the Emperor has joined the fray. They'll want to take their time, whittle down our defenses. Still, with your help and that of our eastern allies, we've passed the first test. Our line is unbroken. As for Alize, well, she's in good hands over at the infirmary. My lord, the Kyrusians have completed their examinations in Mistress Alize, and it is as we feared. She's locked in a slumber without any outward cause. Sucro mad. Just like the others, damn it all. Aye, the Garleans picked a fine time to come knocking. Five scions incapacitated, and with the enemy at our, on our doorstep, I cannot spare the men to assist in the search for a cure. The best I can do is see to it that Alize is escorted safely back to the Rising Stones. Yugiri and I would return to our encampment. The main contingent of our forces from the Far East is under sail, and all must be ready, made ready for their arrival. I'll not keep you then. Determined. Nod. Judging by the Garleans' recent movements, or lack thereof, they won't be launching another offensive in the immediate future. You, you should return to the Rising Stones. Given the plight of your fellow Scions, I can understand if you feel on edge, but you'll be no good to anyone without rest. Unfortunately, despite everyone else sleeping forever, you must also sleep temporarily. Despite how uncomfortable that might be. Why didn't my portrait work? It's totally fine. Oh well. It will have to be adjusted later anyway. For the new outfit. That Lalafell's outfit threw me off because I thought he was trying to be Luigi. My gear set should be fine. It won't be a problem anyway, because like I said, I will be changing the outfit and thus having to re-register it regardless, so I think it should be okay then. And there wouldn't be an occasion before then for it to appear. So, you know. No problem. What was my... Now that I think about it. Um... Adventure plate. Oh, right. 
Sucrose Adventure plate is Card Crusher. <laughs> I forgot. Anyway. Back to seriousness. Ah, Sucro, welcome home. Word has it that you and Mistress Alize gave the Garleans quite a thrashing. Speaking of whom, where is Mistress Alize? I was certain she would have returned by now. Uh, bad news there. By the Twelve, not her too. Electric Zebra? Oker and I will ready the infirmary for her arrival. We will also need to send a message to Tataru post-haste. Would that I had something other than grim tidings to share with her. And with you too, for that matter, it grieves me to report that the Archon's condition remains unchanged. As we speak, Colton A, Kryl, and Master Matoya continue to explore every possible avenue. Alas, their efforts have yet to bear fruit. But all is not lost. You are still hale and whole, after all. Though I suspect you must be tired from the journey, from your journey. You should rest, my friend. Leave the worrying to us for the time being, at least. Nod. I think this is probably where 4.5 part 1 ended, because patches usually happen... Point fives usually happen in two sets. Yeah, meanwhile at the border of Alamigo. But worry not, we will see the entirety today. It's already been three hours, surprising. Various saluting. Hello, Xenos. In parentheses, in quotation marks, rather. Not parentheses. That's very different. In terms of punctuation. Oh, that's all we get? Just like, Xenos is here, except it's not really Xenos, but you know, whatever. Uh, if you were specifically saying that you were distracted from seeing the Card Crusher Adventurer plate, here it is. This will probably also have to change soon. A brief reprieve. But yeah, that would have been 4.5 part 1, and this is 4.5 part 2. Ah, Sucro, yours is a welcome face indeed in these troubled times. Though if you've come to inquire about our stricken brothers and sisters, I'm afraid I have not to report. Colton and, uh, and, the, and the others continue their tireless search for answers, and I too have done all in my power to assist them. Alas. My apologies for the intrusion. I was told Master Alphino had been brought here and wished to see if his condition had improved. Oh, you missed the Lalafell dressed like Luigi. He was only kind he was only kind of dressed like Luigi. Mr. Sucro, I've heard about the part you played in driving back the Empire's forces. Thank you. That you were able to stop them, if only for a short while, gives me hope. Questioning head tilt. I realize how strange such words must sound coming from a Garlean's lips, but I speak them out of the love I bear for my homeland, because I wish to see an end to the bloodshed. That is why I chose to share all I know, that, all that I know with the Alliance. Though I will surely be branded a traitor, I am content to bear that ignominy. It will seem a small price to pay if it helps prevent this conflict from escalating any further. Nod. But enough of my prattling. The war is not what brought me all this way. I came to see Master Alphino. An acquaintance of Sucro and Alphino, are you? Well, far be it for me to turn away good company. If you will follow me, sir. When word reached me that Alphino had returned, it seemed only right that I visit him. Poor lad, it pains me to see him thus. But I take solace in the knowledge that he is safe and well cared for. He fought valiantly at the burn. The Popularis could not have wished for a more committed ally. Yeah, he does. I know not how he came to be so afflicted, but I pray a cure will be found soon. 
On an unrelated note, you may be interested to know that I traveled here in the company of another acquaintance of yours. Questioning head tilt? He awaits my return at North Silvertier, and I'm certain he would be glad to see you. Assuming you can spare the time, that is. Nod. Oh, that's nearby. The Luigi-like Lalafell is nowhere to be seen, unfortunately. Oh, this acquaintance. Ah, there you are. I was beginning to think you would not come. It takes me a second to get places. That's how travel works. It sounds like you've been through the mill. You should have called me. Though I must confess, tracking down missing souls isn't exactly within my field of expertise. As you may have surmised, I heard much of Master Garland growing up in Garlemald. Indeed, he's long been so a source of inspiration to me. Most Garleans would say that he's a traitor, that he turned his back on his country. We of the Populares, however, consider him a revolutionary. A man willing to defy the, emperor, the Empire's dreams of subjugation, that his inventions might bring about a better future for all mankind. Please, revolutionary is a term best reserved for my work. I'm but an Imperial defector who thought to aid another Imperial defector. Whatever Master Garland says, I am humbled to find myself in such distinguished company. Speaking of distinguished company, we heard from Raubon that you ran into an old friend in the burn. Is it true? Gaius still lives? Nod. Like most in the army, I never had the privilege of seeing the Legatus without his mask. To think I walked halfway across the burn in the presence of the Black Wolf. And he claimed to have severed ties with the Empire to hunt Assians, did he? Hmm. After his humbling at the Praetorium, one would think he'd have the good sense to stay dead. Should we meet again, I shall be sure to tell him so. Commander Aldin also spoke of the Alliance's meeting with the Emperor, though I still labor to believe what he told us. Did his Radiance really claim that Garlemald was founded by the Assians? Nod. But that is madness. The very notion is absurd. Every fiber of my being rails against it. And yet I see there is no escaping the truth. From the very founding of my homeland, my brothers and sisters have laid down their lives in service to a lie. The Assians must be stopped to save my people, to save all peoples. For all the Empire's many crimes, even I did not suspect. Had I known, I would have left a lot sooner. But that is in the past. Here in the present, we must apply ourselves to the problem of how the Empire's ambitions may be thwarted, not only in Eorzea, but in the Far East as well. The Iron Works will spare no effort to achieve that end. Seriu's Wall was a good start, but we can do more, and we will. We will show them what it means to achieve freedom through technology. Begging your pardons, I bear a message for the Warrior of Light. That's me? Commander Aldin requests your presence at Alliance Headquarters in Alamigo. He would discuss matters of strategy at your earliest convenience. Nod. Ah yes, the inevitable messenger. I knew it wouldn't be long before our duty called you away. Before duty called you away. Time no doubt being of the essence, could I tempt you to... Could I tempt you to a ride aboard the Excelsior? If there's a faster way to Raban's side, I will personally apologize to the commander for keeping him waiting. I can teleport, but sure. Whether or not we acknowledge teleportation varies depending on the specific minute of the day. Well, I'm here now. I don't think that's a place designed for sleeping. I too will make for the border anon. If there's aught I can do to help, 
I consider it my duty to see it done. I swear, every time you board my airship, you seem to be barreling headlong into danger, and every time you somehow contrive to emerge victorious, which, of course, is an admirable skill. But no one is invincible, Sucro. Not even you, so please take care of yourself out there. I pray you return safe on the front lines. Though ill-equipped to join the fray, I shall do all I can to assist from headquarters. My colleagues and I have been tasked with evacuating casualties by air. See that you aren't among them, eh? That was a very brief reprieve. Yeah, I think that is the amazing Manderville Spear. Oh, there's striking dummies here. Someone's practicing their rotations. A Requiem for Heroes? Question marks? Commander Aldin is waiting, my lady. It would be best if we proceeded to the Alliance headquarters at once. I added a the. It was just two Alliance headquarters. We're here. We did it. Is there a... There sure is a trial here that I forgot about. You're here. Good. I summoned you to discuss strategy, but first I would apprise you of the Garlean's movements. Upon speaking with Rauban, several cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. Well? Indeed. There have been several skirmishes along the border, but as yet neither side has delivered a decisive blow. We had long assumed that the Garleans would overwhelm us in a straight fight, but we seem to be gaining ground, albeit slowly. As to why that might be, the most likely explanation is that they have yet to commit all their forces. Still, we are winning, and our latest intelligence suggests the Emperor has retreated back to Garlemald. In light of this, we are considering launching an offensive with the aim of pushing the front line forward and giving ourselves some room to breathe. Commander! The Imperials! They've broken through our defenses to the east! What? Our scouts say their forces are being led by Lord Xenos. Lord Heon and Commander Hex have taken their troops to provide support, but we don't know how long they can hold out. So, they've been biding their time, waiting for his arrival, have they? Well... Very well. Send word to our allies, requesting reinforcements for the front line. Salute. Should the worst come to the worst, I may need to enter the fray myself. But what of you? Do you still have the strength to fight? You need only say the word, or so long as you leave the Assian to me. Well, I did say the line about defeating Assians earlier. So, so long as you leave the Assian to me. He may not die as such, but to see Lord Xenos fall on the battlefield would deal a heavy blow to Imperial morale. I'll see to it the men stay clear. Nod. What? Why won't they open? We're busy! Please, I bid you open. What's wrong? Is it the voice again? Nod. Are you sure you're in a fit state to do this? I have to try. Nod. May Ralga grant us strength. Give him hell, lass. I, for my part, will defend this place to my dying breath. 
determined. Meanwhile, at the border of Alamigo. I'm suddenly wondering also, when did I start deciding to narrate every emote that I could identify? I guess it's fine to do that. Probably as soon as Sucro started nodding. But it wasn't every emote at first. I was wrong, there's more triumph, actually. Wait. Oh, right! In the coming battle, you will fight as, you will fight as Hien! I forgot that this was here. I guess hotbars of this nature are technically classified as pet hotbars for some reason, which is why this is here. So we got second wind. Hien mode activated. Form a cool samurai. True. We got a we got a damage over time. We got a gap closer. We've got the combo. And yeah, okay, got it. Ready? So there are those willing to stand against the crown prince. Interesting. The warrior of light has left the lion's headquarters. Let's put an end to this here and now. Do you truly believe that possible? Then let us test the limits of this Garlean vessel. Yeah, a formidable foe. This one's for you, Ada. But we've come too far to fall now. To fail now. Yeah, the updates of where the, the main character is is pretty good. I think there's some other game that did something similar. Soon I shall give the lie to man's indomitable spirit. It sounds like... I feel like there was something else that did something of that nature. Brace yourselves. Oh, I chose wrong. A little bit. <laughs> the Warrior of Light has stopped at home to check with the retainers. The Warrior of Light is still nowhere in sight. Yeah, I mean, you're... I'm... Strength, my friends. It would not do to have Sucro arrive to find us battered and broken. Fight and struggle if that is your want, but you will not escape your fate. Quickly, we must spread out! <laughs> Please wait 20 minutes for the kill, yeah. I really like the play as NPCs segments. I guess they're not NPCs right now. Our fate is not yours for to, to decide. Enough, you will learn your place. I guess they're PCs at this particular moment. Behold, a taste of my true power. I didn't need to do that. Oh. Ugh, what is this sorcery? Look upon Ameno Habakiri and know the depths of your folly. Oh, no, you don't. Here it comes. What? Lee Snow, what have you done? If we would bring all to bear, then so the must we. The power. The art of my forebears. Well done, dispelling his phantoms. Now hurry, we must protect Lise. Oh yeah! Maybe that's what I'm thinking of, the One Punch Man fighting game where if you pick the one punch man you just have to wait for him to show up and then like you win once he does more or less i think you probably still have to land the one punch 
If we can at least... Still, you choose to struggle against the inevitable. We may be on the back foot, but it's not over yet. If we can at least hold out until Sukuro arrives, I'm sure we can turn this around. I think I might be doing that part of the mechanics wrong. I don't know. But yeah, maybe that's what I was thinking of. Uh, I could use some healing. That'd be nice. Thank you. She comes, does she? Then I need not waste my time on you. Wait, is she, is she, was she visible? To the stars. Not yet. Blazing dynamo. Adversaries purified. Fight among themselves. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh. You get it. Adversaries purified, huh? That's the only line of that I caught. Also, I think there was like a fight amongst themselves line in there. It can't be well timed every time. Oh. Punched. It can't be well timed every time. But here is Sucro! There she goes! Yeah, the, the broken mask with the glare behind it. It would not do for Sucro to arrive to see us battered and broken, says Hien. Whoops. Magic. With a Garlean body. That's hardly fair. <laughs> In this battle, you will. I wish it said that. Maybe it will say that, actually. I don't remember. Still, he must be stopped, no matter the cost. Yeah, no. I think I remember at this point thinking, are they killing off everybody? That's a that's a good thumbnail. Ah, bringer of light. It has been too long. Wait, we just switched from no voice acting to voice acting in in this same cutscene. It's a little odd, but that's fine. I narrow. No words to mark our reunion. So be it. You expect words from Sucro? Have you been paying attention? Equilibrium must be restored. And only your death will redress the balance. In the coming battle, you will fight as Sucro Fuck. It does say it! <laughs> Clapping. <laughs> I need a screenshot of that, too. <laughs> I forgot it does. All right. All right, you. I don't have my gap closer yet. So I'm going to walk up to you very slowly. We will suffer your in in interference no longer. The time for games has passed. And you just cast triple. That's what Asians love to cast Final Fantasy VIII spell, I guess. Sucro is very cool and powerful. Yeah. Sucro doesn't care about any of these attacks yeah. that much. Yeah. You think you know of the dark, but I will show you the true nature of our power. I make smoke effects happen. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, this is the Asian theme music. Forgot.
Wasn't that the attack that like completely wiped out Sucro before? Like when Xenos originally was here? Arms link, the idiot. Ha 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 ha. What if I didn't get knocked back by your funny knockback maneuver? What then? Okay, fine. I'll be over here for a second, I guess. Fine. I got hit in an avoidable way. Oh no, my food buff. It's fine. You are strong, bringer of light, but her blessing will av her blessing will avail you not. You can't simply steal all of Xenos's tricks and then like that's it. And then, like, I guess you added some spells on top of it. To redress the balance, to ensure the salvation of this star, you must fall. What if I was invincible, though? Oh, the invincibility isn't working for that. Impossible. How is it you've grown so powerful in the gifts? I do like that, like, all the stuff Xenos was doing against us. Like, that either completely... You vested La Habrea, but I will not be cast aside so easily. That either, like, wiped us out when we were trying to... fight Xenos in previous... fights like this before. Oh no, I can't arm's length this time. It's fine. In a sense, I kind of have a gap closer of being able to cast a spell while moving. But yeah, like all the stuff Xenos was doing either is now like nothing to Sucro, or like at the very least, stuff Xenos was doing when we needed four people is now also nothing to Sucro. The U the UI does continue to insist this is Xenos. And I'm, I'm saying Xenos as well, but that's because it's all the Xenos maneuvers that I'm speaking about. If I wasn't a tank, I probably wouldn't be able to tank through them quite as much. But, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good emote. <laughs> I, see. I see, he says, falling over. I didn't know Xandra had a face tank emote. That's pretty good. <laughs> what? what, do you want to do that again? It's fine. I can kill you again if you want. Your mother chose her champion well. Yet, for all your strength, you will still fail. Ah! I just have to activate cutscene mode and then you cannot win. What? Ah! Bad timing you. voice. Bad timing! Hey! Stop it! Ah, someone calls to you. Too late, alas. I was waiting for one of the headaches to be that poorly timed. And then Sucro died, I guess. Or not. Uh. 
Unless this is the afterlife, of course. So I guess Elidibus just did that swing and then there was nothing there, actually. At last, I found you. Whoever you are, you have terrible timing. Glare. Sucro mad. Please, there's no cause for alarm. Do you have any idea what you've been doing? Though I confess, this is not where I had intended to meet. But the place of our meeting is of no consequence, like the war you wage. Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. I almost died just now. The better path leads you here, to me. I have need of your strength. You have to send me back now. We're busy. The battle is over, the danger past, but your work is not yet done. I don't know what that means. Go to the Crystal Tower. I have left something for you near its base. It will serve as a beacon of sorts, one which I pray will help you on your journey. All you need do is find it. I will take care of the rest. Sucro mad. Soon we will throw wide the gates. Yeah, you're really he, they they really aren't making a great case and for the themselves. For the first will be yours to walk at last. The first, huh? That's the first time we've heard of the first. Actually, no, it's not, I don't think. We probably heard of the first before from Certain other figures. It's the first time recently we've heard of it. Oh, my ears were clipping through my pillow. Anua? No, wait, maybe? Okay, not Anua. I forgot the You're name awake. of her. Thank heavens. Just me, I guess. What happened? Oh, what happened? Do you recall the confrontation with Xenos? You were the first to come to the aid of Mistress Lise and the others on the front line. I do recall that, yes. I almost died. In the midst of your duel, it is said you faltered and that the Crown Prince seized the opportunity to deliver a mortal blow. Yet before his blade could find its mark, he was distracted by the arrival of a second adversary who bore you away from the battlefield and into the hands of our Chirurgeons. Chirurgeons, I never know how to say that word. Say what? Oomst. Lest you wonder, he left before you awoke. <laughs> As is his wont. It's Astinian, I think. Yep, that's Astinian. Thanks, Astinian. Astinian never was one for emotional farewells. So Astinian just like elusive jumped Sucro out of the battlefield, basically. <laughs> Thanks. Though Zeno bested all before him, the battle clearly took its toll, for he retreated shortly after your rescue. Seeing this, the remaining Imperial forces decided discretion was the better part of valor and pulled back, allowing us to re-establish our position. <laughs> Was there an old Tank Dragoon build? We have since received word of renewed unrest in the provinces, doubtless inspired by the efforts of the Aeorzean Alliance and our Far Eastern allies. Nor does the good news end there. 
We have also come into possession of intelligence suggesting unrest within the Imperial Court. This would certainly explain why both the Emperor and Lord Xenos appear to have abandoned the fight. We did it, I guess. A long-awaited ray of hope in these dark times. Hooray, but there's some weird shit happening I need to talk to somebody about. Back when there were cross-class skills, you could put tank aggro management skills on a dragoon and make a decent backup tank. Interesting. What of the Scions? I mean, we could have chosen to say what of Alize specifically, but what about all of them? Wake, I'm afraid. But please, concentrate on your own recovery for now. I'm afraid I can't do that, Emmerich. You have carried the hopes of some half-dozen nations, and we are all eternally grateful for your efforts. But no one is without their limits, not even you. Huh. I don't remember that about Dragoons. Maybe that's part of what contributed to the floor tank. Um, perception of them. Leave this fight to us, my friend. You have earned your rest. Sucro has no limits. Sucro kill. Sucro win. Ah, but before I forget. Uh? I was asked to deliver a message as soon as you awoke. A reminder that you are not alone, though many of your allies have fallen. When you are well and rested, you are to return home, where friends will be waiting for you. Hmm? Now, if you will excuse me, I must return to the front. May we meet again soon. Are you, trying to, are you trying to do the destroyed thing again? Ah. To the stars. When the lights go out. Oh. On a Saturday evening. Robotic Shogun. Destroy! Oh, the, uh, the, the Trogdor song of Istinian song. Istinian was a man. Or maybe he was like a dragoon man, or maybe he was just Nidhogg, but he was still Istinian, etc. You know, memes. Courtesy of one Denmo McStronghuge or whatever. I think that was his name. Nod. I don't think Callie would be able to draw out a word in the proper way. She'd be like, Istin e e e e e e e e e n or something like that. Or Istinine, or something like that, maybe. Well, this is a most unexpected surprise. I thought you can find a bed. Whomst. Oh, hey. Yeah, I, I just refuse to be confined to bed, sorry. When I heard that- Estinian was a man, I mean, he was a Dragoon man. I mean, he might have been Needhawk. That's pretty close. Needhog. When you really need to get that one when you need to when you really need a truffle to complete that one bundle in Stardew Valley, Needhog. But he was still as Tinian. When I heard that you'd collapsed on the field of battle, I confess I feared the worst. But with you standing here before me, I see now that the reports of your defeat were greatly exaggerated. Thank the Fury. That's a funny thing for you to say. And he was still Astinian. Or however Callie said that. Nod. As long as we have you, Mistress Funk, history suggests we have a fighting chance. Speaking of fighting, you may be surprised to hear that the war's effects can already be felt even here in Ishgard. In anticipation of a need for reinforcements, our Artoirel will soon be departing for the front lines with a contingent of our finest knights. I would advise you to stay until your strength had returned, but I know but I know it would be an exercise in futility. Nod. Jumpinating the countryside, jumpinating all the dragons, and the thatched roof's gone again. He's jumped through the roof again. That's not quite how it goes, but that would happen. 
Estinian would definitely accidentally, or maybe purposefully, destroy the roofs of thatched roof cottages. Dark days lie ahead, of that I have no doubt, but the light of hope shall ever guide our steps so long as we have the will to press onward. And press onward we must. Farewell, my friend. I pray our next meeting will be under happier circumstances. Bow. Who am I going to tell about this crystal tower thing, though? You know that I, you will be ever welcome at the house for Tom. Now away with you. I dare not keep you any longer. Someone shouted A in shout chat at some point. Ah. Shoutouts to them for shouting A. There's a funny creature here. There's an incarnation of destruction here. Well, I guess there's cutscenes now as well. It's the rest of them. Shake head. Gasp! Gasp! Hello, I'm alive. Smile. By the twelve! I don't believe it! Oh, I cut off Tataru by accident. It's me! Oh. Oh, Tataru. I rushed back as soon as I could. I swear, my heart nearly stopped when I heard you'd collapse like the others. What in heaven's name is going on? I wish we knew, but I've been told to go to the Crystal Tower. Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. Oh, well, that's helpful. Well, time to stream Elder Scrolls Oblivion again, I guess. And no Shadowbringers until that's 100% completed. The better path leads to him? Just kidding. Hmm. <gasps> if his is the voice you've all been hearing, <laughs> perhaps the others are with him. I would never do that. I would never not stream Shadowbringers. I would never... I don't want to say I would never stream Oblivion again, but I'd never withhold Shadowbringers until Oblivion. I did stream Oblivion a very, very many times ago. But, yeah. Sir Emmerich said the fighting had reached a stalemate, didn't he? But if that monster masquerading as Xenos comes back? Thancred, Yastola, Urianje, Alphano, Alize. You're going to need all of them on your side to defeat him. And I forbid you from going to face him on your own. Do you hear me? I already did, sorry. Surprise. So if you must leave, go and find the others. Bring them home. I will, Tataru. Smile, nod. I'm assuming that if you're a Lalafell, you don't kneel at this scene. <laughs> As for where to start, you said the stranger had left a beacon for you at the Crystal Tower, right? But how are you to find it, now that the tower has been sealed shut? Unseal it? There has to be a way. If anyone would know, 
It's Sid and the researchers of St. Koinak's find. Maybe it's right next to the seal? Don't you worry. We'll find that beacon for you. Nod. Cheer. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace. Oh good, these two are fine. Free to stand guard at the throne as usual. I say oh I good as if they're people that I should care about. Abandoning the front. Or that they're any good. Because obviously they're not good. They're un they're they're definitely on the bad side, but like I don't know, maybe you just feel weird without the two guards there. Empire bad. How could I remain Not take there alert. The rumor that my son is possessed by a demon spreads like a sickness here at home. I will not be made to fight for the throne a second time. But what of you? Did you not tell me you would destroy Eorzea's champion with the ease that one might swat a fly? A minor setback. She will not escape me again. Yeah. The rumor spreading has worked. Where is your grandsire? I would have words with him. How should I know? Do you hide from each other's sight as well? I imagine he's doing what all Asians do. That's a funny callback to when he said I would I will be doing what all Asians do earlier. Hmm. He must have found a way to take advantage of this turmoil. Men are not pawns to be played with, Asian. You underestimate us at your peril. This war will not be decided by you and yours. Man must choose his own fate, and I, for my part, will do all within my power to see Galamal emerge victorious. Just ignores that and leaves. Fair enough, I guess. Did we check behind the throne for Solace? Because that's a safe place to assume that Solace is hiding. He seems to like doing that. Pray forgive the intrusion, Your Radiance, but the requested preparations are now complete. We stand ready to begin production of Black Rose upon your order. That's bad. I think that's really bad, given the lighting. Seems bad. Final Fantasy XIV, Stormblood. is over. There's least though. I'm assuming you mean when you say good reasons, you don't mean that seriously and you do in fact, you are in fact employing a device known as sarcasm. I think these credits are pretty different from the original Stormblood credits, like visually. I think we should at least look at all the concept art and stuff. It's all like speed it up. Here's Hien. Yeah, I haven't. I don't remember this art at all. Hmm. 
and Yugiri. I don't remember this song either, actually. Go set to. Yosetsu is the best character in Stormblood. That one lady, I guess, is here too. I guess. Those two, Alpino and Alize. Alize has just pranked Alpha No, I think. I suppose that's the. Oh, we get little like. These are probably all things we've seen before. These this part. Yep. We've seen these scenes. I don't know how much of this we need to look at, at this point. Maybe let the music go, so. I did not see that, but that does sound like something that would happen. I think at this point it's probably fine to skip a little bit. The cre I just know the credits take a while. Well, if it contains a minor spoiler, I'd rather not see it. I'll just go ahead and skip the rest of the credits, since no one was telling me not to. I knew you'd be all right, and to celebrate your return, I made you this, a brand new traveling outfit. Oh, I do hope it fits. Uh, but now is not the time to fuss over your measurements. I must go and speak with the researchers of St. Koinox Find. You go and rest while we track down that beacon. Scion Traveler's Attire Cough. The concept is fun. Meanwhile... Actual Xenos. Still murdering. Yeah, yeah. My enemy. My friend. Had I been but a step faster. A pity your hunt leads you elsewhere. Not that I am surprised. May you find joy in it. Grow stronger. More savage, and savor every triumph. Oh, there was an art of Xenos in those credits, in now that I'm thinking time, about it. I will reclaim that which is rightfully mine. Yep, that sure is something. It does look like he's probably going to take that armor. It's Sucro! Yay!
The Crystal Tower. It's a tower made of crystal. Well, that's obviously also a good screenshot to have. Thanks for the camera angle. In the midst of a requiem for heroes, a voice rings out across time and space. In fields of tranquil light, sow you seeds of darkness. <laughs> it is my favorite part from my favorite Nintendo Entertainment System game. Okay, so Tataru's outfit is not one I'll be using, but we might as well look at it. Next time on Final Fantasy XIV, one brings shadow, one brings light. Whoa, she reads Roman numerals correctly? Good job, Callie. Wow. Um. Tyon Traveler. The helmet is kind of absurd. Like, pretty, pretty absurd. I mean, the outfit's not bad and all. The boots are pretty absurd Can as well. Can Callie read 48? Whoa. Callie, you're so talented. But yeah, this is the Scion Traveler's outfit. Uh, it's a little bit ridiculous in some aspects. Especially the helmet. I really don't like the helmet. What is happening with the helmet anyway? Weird. I don't like the eyes, like the fake face. Uh, the boots are a little bit ridiculous as well. I did use parts of this outfit when I originally played Shadowbringers. But anyway. Oh, the funny hat. Anyway, what about Sucro's actual Shadowbringers outfit, though? Realm Reborn. Heavensward. Stormblood. Shadowbringers. Da -da -da -da. Here we are. The revised Shadowbringers outfit, officially deployed. Originally Final Fantasy 1 fighter, but I decided I hated the really short sleeves. Instead, now it's this really cool outfit. It it does use the, the classic fighter uh, gauntlets and boots, but we've also got the this uh, chivalric coat of fending and Wake Doctor's pants. And also Excalibuncle is here. I really like this outfit a lot. So much so that I've already been like, if I get to Endwalker and I still really like this outfit, what am I gonna do? It is kind of like that. Oh. Oh right, I need to, whoop. There we are. And also, if you have not seen Twitter, you'll know that I have drawn Sucro for each expansion. Ta-da! Sucro Art Shadowbringers official. Did you know that this armor is really ridiculously detailed? <laughs> I'm getting more powerful at art constantly, though. It's Sucro Bringer. That's correct. Let's go over here for a second. I I have been preparing for Shadowbringers. Step one. The background is different. Step two. The game of the day must accurately represent the emotions we will experience during Shadowbringers. <laughs> Step three. Uh, where is it? Here's the crew. Sucro picture. Step 
Something like that. That'll do. For now. I did apply on every on everything. So yeah. I feel like that image accurately sums up Shadowbringers from my memory of it. I might shuffle around the crew down here a little bit to make them a bit better. At some point, some of the crew might need to be shuffled out. I mean, I haven't even actually played Guild Wars 2 on stream yet, so Sakura Treezy might not be able to stick around for a bit. Anyway. This is the way Shadowbringers will look. Oh, wait, no, I forgot one. The chat cover. Boop, there we go. But that will, of course, begin Friday. But that doesn't mean we're done. Oh, no. As we've been doing, first of all, I forgot to change this in advance. We must watch the demo. We have reached the new expansion. Welcome to Shadowbringers. Square Enix. You might know them from Final Fantasy XIV. How many years have come and gone since that day? How many years have I waited for this moment? For the one that stood alone against the storm. The Shadowbringers theme rules so much. It's so good. I love it. This was. As of right now, this is my favorite Final Fantasy story that I know of. What? Why is there a gremlin? I forgot there was a gremlin in this trailer. <laughs> I haven't seen Endwalker yet, so I'm not entirely certain the Shadowbringers is the best, but it does rule a lot. Also, the Warrior of Light is switching job classes in combat here. There's a creepy ink. I guess the Gremlin is representing the Warrior of Light's doubts and like self-criticism and whatnot. That makes sense. Uh, something bad's happening here. Master Matoya. We may accept this fate or defy it, but we cannot deny it. Ariane is here. Deny. I am not one to run from my troubles. And we know that voice. Dragoon! Yep, Archer and then Warrior, like 1.0 and 2.0. Monk. As in Stormblood. The one called... It's Yashtola. It's a giant city with slums surrounding it. 
and lots of rich people doing rich people things. Meanwhile, Bankrid has a gun blade and is running with someone, and there's a lion. Subtitles, but yep. Damn, I forgot how cool this trailer was. Minfilia. Final Fantasy. Fantasy. I just said fantasy. Final Fantasy 3 leitmotif. Some sort of location. Dancing. Dancer and Gunbreaker were the jobs introduced in Shadowbringers. Benoit, indeed. And Viera, yeah. Also introduced in Shadowbringers. Tragedy, greater even than the seventh umbral calamity, must be undone. Samurai. Yeah, Hrothgar too. I don't know if we've seen any of those yet. History must be unwritten. Crystal Tower is here too, yeah. Seems odd. Become what you must. Dark Knight. Become a warrior of darkness. God, that Shadowbringers is so good. And the title screen, of course. But of course, that will be next time. So thank you all for watching. We got through Stormblood. Next time on Friday, Shadowbringers. It's time. Or it will be on Friday, anyway. Thank you all for watching. As usual, if you're interested in any links, they are available at borealrobin.cardwith2rs.co. Other ways you can support me include... Following, if you are not already following. Uh, telling other people about the stream, if you think they'd be interested. Subscribing on Twitch, etc. But yeah. Don't worry about any of that too much. And I hope all of you have a no, don't start it again. Hey, stop it. I'm trying to I'm trying to outro here. <laughs> and uh, that was funny, though. No, don't worry about it. Don't do it. I played through Shadowbringers before for the record. And also for the record, I uh, the last part of the game I actually played the main story quest of myself was 5.1. Starting with Shadowbringers, as mentioned earlier, I think I will put a big giant no spoilers on the title of everything. But yeah, anyway. Everyone have a great rest of the day slash night slash week slash year slash century, etc. And I will see you in the very soon future. That's right, no spoilers with a gun. That's correct. I will see you soon for Shadowbringers. Farewell. Stop, stop resetting the demo. There we go. Okay, good night. Once this is stop, once this stops being slightly dramatic.
Good night, until Friday. Sucro can also be the light, though, if she wants to. But yes, good night. I can't. I don't. I don't know how to. I don't know how to do an outro. Help. Farewell.